2028, a mysterious artifact was unearthed somewhere in the Middle East that would have a profound effect on humanity. By studying the artifact, world-renowned genetic scientist Dr. Joan Eichen was able to develop a revolutionary new serum that would finally allow us to unlock the unused portion of the human brain. The first version of Dr. Eichen's serum granted recipients the ability to manifest powerful psionic energy emissions with their minds, but unfortunately, this power came at a terrible price. Since a fully developed human brain was not capable of adapting to the powerful effects of the serum, the subjects would eventually lose control and go completely insane. Dr. Eichen theorized that if the serum was administered in utero while the subject's mind was still developing, then perhaps the recipient would have a better chance of successfully adapting. The experiment was almost a complete success in that the subjects were granted psionic abilities and were much more mentally stable, but they still ran the risk of going insane if they overextended their mental abilities. The drug was dubbed the psionic booster serum, and the subjects who received it were referred to as psionics for their ability to manipulate this powerful new psionic energy. Soon thereafter, certain extremely gifted individuals began creating their own unique styles of psionic talents, called totems, based on their own personal belief systems. While the advent of the psionic booster serum was widely considered a quantum leap forward in human evolution, there were many who feared these superhumans would eventually destroy our society. These fears were soon realized as some psionics began to abuse their powers and turn to a life of crime. It was because of this that the government created the Department of National Psionic Control, or DNPC. The purpose of this organization was to deal with the ever-growing threat of renegade psionic criminals. The DNPC knew that the only way to effectively combat these powerful criminals was to employ psionic agents of their own, so they immediately recruited the strongest and most stable psionics they could find. However, due to the powerfully violent nature of psionic combat, public property was often damaged or destroyed, and innocent lives were frequently lost. Given these circumstances, public opinion quickly began to wane over the usefulness and operating procedures of the DNPC. In order to appease the public, the DNPC decided to create an aggression control chip that could be implanted in psionic agents who were considered to be a potential threat to public safety. Even the most disciplined psionic agents occasionally made mistakes and were forced to decide between the aggression control chip and an early retirement. Kane was one of the agents forced to make this decision. And although he is currently the best psionic field agent the DNPC has got, Kane must learn to control himself if he is to earn the respect and admiration of the people he has sworn to protect. Agent Kane is currently recuperating in his personal quarters, awaiting his first mission after being reinstated by the Department of National Psionic Control. Kane had been suspended due to a mission where he was responsible for a high number of civilian casualties. DNPC. Accessing information on the DNPC. The Department of National Psionic Control, a division of the Internal Defense Agency, was established in response to the public outcry regarding renegade psionic criminals and the potential threat they pose to society. In addition to its administrative staff and army of specially trained psionic SWAT, the D 
DNPC also enlists the services as its own psionically enhanced humans who function as the department's field agents. Due to the often violent nature of psionic combat, the DNPC has instituted controllers that monitor psionic field agents and help protect the lives of innocent civilians as well as prevent the destruction of public property. Welcome to the DNPC database. Please select a category. General Agent Conduct. Accessing information on General Agent Conduct. Proper conduct within the headquarters of the DNPC must be upheld at all times. Firearms must always remain holstered unless you have special authorization or are inside a designated training area. The use of psionic talents inside headquarters is strictly prohibited unless inside the psionic training chamber with proper authorization from the agent's controller. Psionic agents are required to check in with their designated controller anytime they are going on or returning from a mission. Welcome to the DNPC database. Please select a category. General Agent Conduct. Accessing information on General Agent Conduct. Proper conduct within the... Welcome to the DNPC database. Please select a category. Dr. Joan Eichen. Accessing information on Dr. Joan Eichen. Dr. Joan Eichen is the founder and president of Eichen Pharmaceuticals, and due to her pioneering efforts in the field of psionic research, she is widely thought of as the mother of the psionic revolution. Although Dr. Eichen has made several significant advancements in the field of medical research, such as the gene laser, the advanced incubation chamber, and the cures to a variety of modern phobias, she is most known for her creation of the psionic booster serum. As part of her work, Dr. Eichen administered an adult version of the serum to herself that not only granted her psionic abilities, but also resulted in the creation of the science totem. Welcome to the DNPC database. Please select Priscilla Devine. Accessing information on Priscilla Devine. Priscilla Devine is the head of the Psychic Link Network, a phone psychic company that claims to employ only genuine psychics. The DNPC believes that the Psychic Link is actually a front for Priscilla Devine's real work as a psionic terrorist bent on toppling the medical empire that Dr. Joan Eichen has built. It is not known exactly why she has such a deep-seated hatred for Dr. Eichen. It is only known that Priscilla takes every opportunity to rally and protest against the doctor, as well as anyone or anything affiliated with her or her corporation, Icon Pharmaceuticals. Although Ms. Devine has been arrested by the DNPC on numerous occasions, the cases rarely hold together, and she frequently posts bail using the waning public opinion against the DNPC to earn her freedom. Her obsession with ancient Egypt, combined with her overwhelming desire to help others, all helped inspire Priscilla to create the Sun Totem. Welcome to the DNPC database. The Psionic Booster Serum. Accessing information on the Psionic Booster Serum. World-renowned genetic scientist Dr. Joan Eichen developed the Psionic Booster Serum in an attempt to finally unlock the full potential of the human mind. This serum, when administered to human test subjects, grants them the ability to generate powerful energy emissions with their minds. These enhanced humans are referred to as psionics for their ability to manipulate this amazing new psionic energy. Early versions of the serum proved to be extremely unstable and often caused human test subjects to go completely insane. After further experimentation, it was proven that injections of the serum that were administered in utero had a much higher success ratio because the minds of the test subjects were still developing and were able to adapt to the powerful effects of the serum. The psionic booster serum is still currently administered in utero with minimal adverse effects. Kane here. Afternoon. Did you manage to get some sleep? About a week ago. Sorry to hear that. Me too. So what's up? Well, we have a situation. 
Of course, why else would you call? Just get your stuff together and report to the war room. What's this about? Let's just say that it's regarding an old friend of yours. I'll see you in a few minutes. Again, huh? You don't get much of a break, do you? Tell me about it. I hear your psycho brother's back. You better not show his face around here. Look, I can't be responsible for what Abel does. Besides, I told you he's not my real brother. Take it easy. I was just trying to make conversation. Thank you, sir. Strasburg. Kane, how you doing? Oh, I can't complain. What are you up to? I'm just heading back to my quarters for a little rest. How about you? You going out in the field again? I don't know. The chief just called and said there's a situation, so I'm going to see what it's all about. Well, let me know when you get back. Maybe we can grab some food or something. I see you later. Take it easy. Good to see you again, sir. Kane here. Hello, sir. Your new weapon is ready. Just come down to the armory and pick it up. Thanks. Hey, Jim. Kane, how you doing? Oh, I could be worse. Well, here it is. We put a higher grade insulated handle on this one, but it still could melt. I'll keep that in mind. The firing range is open right now if you want to get a little work in. Sure, I can fire off a few rounds. Great. Go over to the firing range and I'll tell the range boss to let you in. You know the drill. Keep your weapon holstered while you're in the building. Got it. I'll take that. Kane, what are you doing back? I thought you were still suspended. Yeah, they brought me back yesterday. Hmm, I guess they don't have enough agents to go around these days, huh? Well, you're the only one this evening, so go ahead and take the far lane. Take a run in the side chamber? What? You know I'm not supposed to use the training chamber without an authorization from my controller? Believe it or not, the Chief has lifted that restriction. So we've placed a fire talent in the chamber for you. Just go on in and get it. Alright, I'll head in there now. And be sure to keep an eye on your sanity, Kane. There's some serum in the chamber if you need it.
pull it. Identification of psionic agent K verified. Please make your way to the center of the chamber and prepare for training simulation level 1. Commence training simulation level 1. Begin. Warming up. Go ahead and pull the lever again when you're ready to proceed. Please make your way to the center of the chamber and prepare for training simulation level 2. Commence training simulation level 2. Begin. In, sir, the chief's waiting. Kane, come on in. Could you guys excuse us? It's good to have you back. How are you feeling? I'm all right. So who's this friend of mine you mentioned earlier? Priscilla Devine, if you can believe that. She was released last night. They let the hotline queen go? Man, I've been through hell over the past few months over her. And they're just gonna let her walk? Look, we all knew the case would fall apart. Too many innocent people died at the waterfront because of us. You mean because of me? Look, Kane, nobody is perfect. Not even you. That incident was in the past, so just try to forget about it, will you? Besides, the aggression control chip you were implanted with will make sure nothing like that ever happens again. Yeah, I suppose you're right. So what's our favorite fortune teller up to this time? Well, we believe that Miss Divine is heading up a new fringe group of psionic radicals that refer to themselves as the Eye of Ra. So what do you want with me? Uh, 
as you know, Priscilla Devine is the head of the Psychic Link Network. Yeah, I was thinking about calling over there later tonight to get me a psychic reading. Very funny. Now, we need you to infiltrate the headquarters of the Psychic Link Network and apprehend Miss Devine. Once she's been neutralized, we can do a clean sweep of her facility and finally put an end to the Eye of Ra. And you couldn't find anyone else to do this? She's extremely powerful, Kane, and you're the best field agent we've got. I suppose I leave immediately. That's right. Your new controller is in Bay 5. Stop by and introduce yourself. Then take the orders on the table and show them to the helipad guard on the rooftop. Yes, sir. Oh, and Kane, we want to do this as quietly as possible. No civilian casualties this time. Uh, Chief, who exactly is Agent Coyne? Ah, the only pen I have around here leaks and it makes all my A's look like O's. Sorry about that. Chief, I think you could probably pick up another pen from the lobby. Good thinking, Kane. I'll do that. Good luck out there. You must be Agent Kane. Hmm, you're bigger than I expected. You sound disappointed. No, no, it's just that most advanced psionics have enhanced the powers of their minds at the expense of their bodies. I try to work at enhancing everything. It gives me an advantage. I bet it does. Uh, do you want me to leave you two alone? Shut up, Steve, and get back to work on that display screen. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. So I heard that when you came back from suspension, you volunteered to have the aggression control chip implanted. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure nothing like that ever happened again. Well, with that chip in place, I don't think you have anything to worry about. You do know how it works, right? For the most part. Well, DNPC regulations require that any agent with the aggression control chip must be completely informed as to how it works before going into the field. Okay, go ahead. The aggression control chip was designed by the DNPC to prevent psionic agents from using unnecessary force and aggression on innocent civilians. If you ever use any type of force on someone who shows no sign of aggression, the chip will detect this and release a synaptic signal that will immediately take you down. Got it. Now be aware that the chip can't distinguish between accidental and deliberate acts of aggression, so you're going to have to be extremely careful. That's comforting. Look, I know this all may seem a little harsh, but you have to understand we just can't afford any more unnecessary casualties. Yeah, I understand. By the way, have you been briefed on what happened to my last controller? If you're asking me if I understand the potential risks of my job, the answer is yes. And you're not the only hotshot agent I've had to monitor in the field. Oh, so I'm a hotshot now. Let's just say you have a bit of a reputation. Well, don't believe everything you hear. It was nice meeting you, Agent Frost, but I gotta go alter someone's future at the Psychic Link. It was nice meeting you, too. I'll give you a call on your cell phone once you're in the field to make sure that all systems are operating efficiently. If you need anything while you're out there, just call. If you need anything while you're out there, just call. Look, Frost can get a little cranky when her equipment isn't working right, so I've gotta fix this monitor fast. Good afternoon, sir. Are those orders from the Chief? They sure are. Great. May I have them? Yeah, here you go. Well, everything seems to be in order here. Have a nice flight, Agent Coin. Thanks. Hello, Agent. Give them hell out there, sir. That's all I know how to give. sent to the Faro village.
Village Trailer Park in order to find the headquarters of the Psychic Link Network, where Priscilla Divine is believed to be leading a fringe group of psionic radicals known as the Eye of Ra. here. Hey, I've started monitoring your vitals and everything appears to be okay. Your body temperature is a bit high though. Are you afraid of flying or something? Nah, that's just me getting warmed up. Okay, if you say so. Just remember that the aggression control chip will prevent that incident at the waterfront from ever happening again. Don't worry, I put that behind me. So where's the entrance to this place? It's just down the road on the right. Check with the night manager once you get there. He should be in the first building on the left once you cross the bridge. Sounds good. And please try to keep a low profile. Hey, how's it going? I don't think I've ever seen you around here. I'm just here visiting a friend. Well, let me tell you. You probably want to stay clear of that psychic link place. There's definitely some weird stuff going on over there. Thanks for the info, but I can take care of myself. Alrighty, suit yourself. Hey boy, I told you to stay out of the road. You're gonna get killed that way. You ain't from around here, are you? You know, we don't take kindly to strangers. I'll keep that in mind. We'll just make sure you do. just happened? I think I just ran into the welcoming committee. I can't believe this. You just started this mission and already we've got casualties. What part of low profile do you not understand? Look, they attacked me first. Obviously. If they hadn't been aggressive, the chip would have taken you down and you wouldn't be talking to me right now. It's okay to defend yourself, but just try not to start any fights. I cannot stress this enough. Alright, alright. I get the point. Good. Try to keep it down so you don't blow this mission. Only use force when it is absolutely necessary. Got it. Something tells me Cleopatra doesn't live here. Living here ain't great. But at least the psychic link gives us 90 minutes of free psychic readings a month. Agent Kane, DMPC. Do you know where I might find the psychic link? Maybe, maybe not. Well, I'm pretty sure it's around here, so I'm going to make you a deal. You point me in the right direction, and I won't trash this place. That's some deal. Take it or leave it. Go outside the office and take a left. Follow the road into phase two and take a right. Then just stay on that road until it ends and you'll come to a gate. The psychic link isn't too far from there, but they usually keep the gate locked, so you'll probably have to find a way through. But you didn't hear that from me. Of course not. Thanks. Thank you. 
Well, what have we here? A trespasser? Looks like you came down the wrong road, city boy. Sorry, I must have forgot my flannel shirt and overalls. Let's show this boy how we deal with trespassers. Guess that just goes to show you that flames never go out of style. How's it going? Did you know that they call Priscilla Divine the Hotline Queen? need to get through that gate at the bottom of the hill. Do you know how to open it? No, I don't. And even if I did, why would I tell you? Because if you don't tell me, I'm gonna go around back and personally muzzle that dog of yours. Now wait a minute. There is no need to bring Flash into this. You know what? You can find your own way through that gate, because I'm not helping you. Hey there, Flash. It's all right. There's just a big mean man outside, that's all. There you go. That's a good boy. Easy. Hmm, what's this? Just looks like a bunch of numbers to me. What's this all about? What do they want with Ikin? Kane. It's Frost. Anything new? I'm not sure. I just found a piece of paper with a bunch of numbers on it. It looks like it could be some kind of code or something. And it's on Psychic Link Stationery. Hmm. Why don't you let me take a look at it? I'll need you to fax it to me. Is there a fax machine around? I didn't see one. Wait a minute. I think I saw one back at the manager's office. All right. Fax it to me as soon as you can. Sure.
Oh, this is too easy. Here you go, Frost. Let's see what you can make of these. What the? Now just what do you think you're doing back there? I needed to use your fax machine. I didn't think you'd mind. Oh, I mind all right. You just stay right there while I go get the police. Hey, wait a second, you just dropped your... Hmm, never mind. an S on this key. I wonder what it means. Hey, I took a look at that fax and those numbers definitely represent some kind of access code. I'm having it deciphered now, but it'll probably take a while. Have you found a way through that gate yet? No, but I just found something I think might help. Give me a call when you decipher that code. Okay. Thank the Lord. You gotta help me out, man. They're gonna kill me. All I wanted was to make a little money, that's all. I didn't want to hurt nobody. Please don't let them kill me, please! Whoa, slow down. Who's trying to kill you? I was waiting for them just down the road, right where I was supposed to. They were gonna give me 5000 for it, man. When they got there, they all got out of their car with their guns and baseball bats and said to give them the town or die. I didn't know what to do, so I just ran as fast as I could. You gotta help me, man. They'll be here any minute. What are you doing selling talents? Don't you know that's illegal? Yeah, I know, but I needed some extra cash and it seemed like an easy job. How was I supposed to know they were going to try and kill me? Did you honestly think you could deal talents with any risk? You ought to know better than that. What do you say? Will you help me out? Sure, I'll help you. Thanks, man. I'll never forget this. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Here's the deal. You give me the talent and stay out of the way. I'll handle the situation. Yes! Here you go! Hey, friend. I believe you have something that belongs to us. First of all, I'm not your friend. And second, so what if I do? Just give us what's rightfully ours, and we'll be on our way. I suggest you give us that there talent before I get riled. Mister, you don't want him to get riled. No, I think I do want to see him get riled. You psionic freaks are all the same. I was pushing around the real humans. We'd be doing the world a favor if we just got rid of you. Now give us that talent, or we're gonna go ahead and take it. Yeah, we ain't afraid of you. 
The only thing you're gonna take from me is a beat. Looks like we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Let's kill both of them. Gonna take it easy for a while if you don't mind. Try. I guess they forgot to put the flammable sign on the door. That's one way to get through a gate. Having learned the location of the psychic link, Kane must now infiltrate the facility and apprehend Priscilla Divine. Well, there's no turning back now. What the heck just happened? I don't know, but that kind of looks like Jimbo's car, don't it? Yep. What do you reckon? This fella tried to steal it? He may have. Why don't we ask him? I persuaded Jimbo to let me have his car, if you know what I mean. 
Uh, I think we get the picture. Maybe we'll just be on our way. Yeah, come on, man. Let's get the heck out of here. I'm always willing to help out an officer of the law. Let me lower the bridge for you. Kane here. Hey, have you made it through the gate yet? Uh, you could say that, but I think I may have stirred up some trouble. Imagine that. We're still working on cracking the code you sent us. Hopefully we'll have it deciphered soon and we can determine exactly what it is. No problem. I think I'm getting close to the psychic link, so just let me know when you have something. You got it. This isn't the entrance to the psychic link. I must be on the walkway to the nicest trailer on Earth. What can I do for you? You can start by opening that door for me. Sorry, this entrance is for psychic link employees only. I'm Kane, the new maintenance guy. Where's your psychic link name tag? I must have left it inside. If you work here, then you must know the employee password. Of course I do. I just can't remember it right now. Sorry, then I can't let you in. Hmm. Looks like I'm gonna have to find another way to get in there. Hi there. What's your name? Manda. What are you doing out here, Manda? It's late. Shouldn't you be at home in bed? I came to help you. You came to help me? You're just a little girl. Didn't your mother ever tell you you shouldn't talk to strangers? Now why don't you just run on home? You're Kane, aren't you? Yeah. How did you know that? We can see things. We knew you'd come. What are you talking about? And who's we? We're the children of tomorrow. It has been foreseen that you will prevent the coming of the Great Darkness, and I came to help you on your journey. Help me how? I brought you a gift that will give you the ability to peer into the minds of others and read their thoughts. How'd you get a gift like that? Like you, we are also gifted. Ours are just different than yours. Here, take it. I have to go now. Thank you.
everybody knows that the employee password is divine. If you work here, then you must know the employee password. You bet. The password is divine. Thank you and welcome aboard. This is Kane. Hey, have you found the psychic link yet? I'm standing in the doorway as we speak. Any luck with that code? Not yet. We still need a little more time. Can you wait there for a bit? Why? Once you're inside, the interference from the psychic link's communication grid will make it impossible for you to receive a call on your cell phone. I don't think it would be a good idea for me to wait around here. There's got to be something we can do. Well, actually, there might be a way. I'm listening. If you can make your way to the Psychic Link's communication grid and shut it down, I might be able to get a call through. Not only that, but destroying the grid could hinder the Eye of Ra's ability to respond, in case you're detected. Sounds good. You know how I love to break stuff. Just be careful in there. Hi, I'll be with you in just a moment. Hey, you're not from maintenance. How'd you get in here? I'm calling security. Hey, don't shoot. What do you want from me? I'm gonna need a little help finding the communication grid. Communication grid? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. Now let me in and show me where it is. Okay, just don't hurt me. Follow me. Communication grid is down the hall and to the right. Just follow the sign and you should have no problem finding it. The communication grid is down the hall and to the right. Just follow the sign and you should have no problem finding it. Thanks. You've been very helpful. That. That's our security. You're on your own now, tough guy.
here. If you want to be employee of the month like me, you have to memorize the entire Psychic Link employee manual. Go ahead, ask me what's on any page. What's on page 79? Page 79 says that in order to read a Psychic Link electrical diagram, you must complete the drawing by connecting the like symbols. works. Good work, Kane. I see that you shut down the communications grid. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Well, we finally deciphered the code. We're not sure exactly what it's for, but they represent a series of images that we'll have to send to you. Are you near a computer with an external link that I can access? No, but there must be one around here somewhere. Hmm. You might try the phone center. They're bound to have a terminal in there. Once you've found one, log on to the DNPC mainframe and I'll upload the images to you. Got it.
seems like every week I'm replacing these stupid floor grates. I mean, you think in this day and age they give you a more sophisticated tool than a crowbar to do it with. A DNPC agent? I haven't done anything wrong. What do you want with me? Do you know where I might find a computer with an external link around here? Sure, they have one at Station 5 at the end of the hall, but the door is locked. Well, could you please unlock it for me? Oh, I can unlock that door. I only have access to the lock on Station 2. You have got to be kidding. <sighs> Alright, go ahead and unlock Station 2. Shoot! What do you want? I just need you to unlock the main door at the end of the hall. Oh, I can't unlock that door. I only have access to the lock on Station 3. I cannot believe this. All right, open it up before I lose my patience. All right, all right. Just don't shoot. Help you? I just need you to unlock the main door at the end of the hall. Oh, I can't unlock that door. I only have access to the lock on Station 4. Besides, Station 5 is reserved for true psychics, if you actually believe there is such a thing. I am a true psychic. Sure you are. Try me. Okay, I'm thinking of a number between one and a thousand. What is it? 882. Nope. Some psychic you are. My favorite number always was 900. Okay. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 1,000. What is it? 900. That's amazing! You must really be psychic. I'll unlock Station 4 for you. I'm gonna need to find a way to lift that grate up. Hey, you think I could borrow that crowbar? Sure, I'm tired of wrestling with this thing anyway. I know exactly what to do with this. This should only take a second. Great. Are you for maintenance? Because the grid seems to be down. As a matter of fact, I am. Does that computer have an external link? Yeah? Why? Look, do you want me to get the grid back up or not? Of course I do. Then I need to use that computer. Okay, go right ahead. Now let's see those images. I sure hope you can get the grid back up.
Kane here. Hello, Agent Kane. It is a pleasure to watch you work. If all our agents were as motivated as you, we wouldn't have to beg for every little budget increase. Who is this? How'd you get this number? Now, now, that's nothing to concern yourself with. Let's just say that I know a lot about you. So what do you want? Your objective has been revised. You are to terminate Ms. Devine at all costs. What? Those weren't my orders. I was just told to bring her in. And unless the revision comes from the chief or my controller directly, I'm not deviating from the plan. Believe me, Agent Kane, I hate to impose on you. But this is a matter of national security. The damage that Ms. Devine can do to our cause is unthinkable. In fact, this situation is so delicate that I could only contact you once you were in the field. I am trusting you to do the right thing. You must terminate Ms. Devine. Oh no, you did not just hang up on me. After I find Priscilla, I'm gonna have to find out who that was. Laundry boy. Come to clean up after his superiors like a good little lackey? Listen here, Priscilla. You don't want to start calling people names, because I can think of some mean things to say about you. I can see your future. It's a miserable lifetime of unrewarded service to that inbred bureaucracy you serve. Unless, of course, you decide to join our cause, in which case you would make a fine general. So what do you say? I'd say you ought to lay off the cupcakes, because you definitely ain't getting enough oxygen to your brain. The DNPC sure has you on a short leash. Did they teach you how to play dead? Woman, I'm gonna smack the taste right out of your mouth. Guards! Kill him! Pretty quick work of my captain of the guard. Oh, is that who that was? Looks like you're gonna have to find a replacement. I have to admit I'm rather surprised that the DNPC reinstated you after that mess you made last month. This time there aren't gonna be any innocent civilians for you to hide behind. No matter. I've brought 
some other friends for you to play with. Impressive, Kane. But I'm sensing doubt and confusion in you. You've been sent here because the DNPC views me as a threat. Answer me this, Kane. What threat do I really pose? All I know is I have a job to do, and I'm damn sure gonna do it. Do you know why you can't answer that question? It's because I pose no real threat. Dr. Iken is the one you should be concerned with. If you only knew what she has done, you would join us in the revolution to stop her. I didn't come here to listen to you whine about Dr. Eichen. The DMPC does not tolerate psionic terrorism, no matter how noble the cause. Now let's get back to headquarters and you can tell the chief all about it. I'll never go back there again. <laughs> So let's go. My destiny lies right here. It's a pity that you can't see yours. Oh, I can see my destiny just fine. And it involves you, me, and the chief back at headquarters. You just don't get it, do you, Kane? We don't have to be enemies. Together we could stop Iken and sever her government ties. I already told you I'm not the revolutionary type. What a shame. Well, you know what they say. If you're not with us, you're against us.
doesn't matter anyway. We're all dead. Go Gotham will destroy us all! Have you completed the mission yet? Sort of. What do you mean? Unfortunately, Miss Divine was not willing to cooperate with us. Why don't we just talk about it back at headquarters? There should be a helicopter there any minute now. All right. Priscilla Divine, Kane is now back at headquarters preparing to test out his new talents in the psionic training chamber. Hey Kane, give us a minute while we set up the training chamber. Everyone's really anxious to see those new talents you acquired. Take your time. This is Kane. Hey, nice to have you back. How are you feeling? Pretty good. We're just getting ready to test the new talents I acquired on that last mission. You know, that's the one downside of being a controller. You never get to try out the new stuff. By the way, you shouldn't feel bad about Ms. Divine. She gave you no choice. You did what you had to do. I know, but something just didn't feel right about it. Hey, did the Chief tell you about that strange call I got while I was in the psychic link? Yeah, we're still working on finding out who it was. It's strange, though. I don't understand how anyone on the outside could have gotten your new number. Well, this guy sure seemed to know a lot. Okay, I'll let you know as soon as we have any answers. So was there anything else that happened on the mission that you would classify as out of the ordinary? There was something, but it's probably nothing. No, what was it? Just before Miss Divine died, she said something about a gold Gotham. I have no idea who or what that is, but it seemed, I don't know, familiar. Have you ever heard that name before? Just the name Golgotham? Do you remember exactly what she said? Uh, something about how Golgotham will destroy the world or something. I don't know. It could be a psionic terrorist we're not aware of. The name doesn't ring a bell. I'll look into it. Just let me know when you're done playing around down there, because we have a new mission. Sure enough. You can go on in now, Kane. Thanks. Welcome to the T-29 Psionic Train Chamber. To run the training program, locate the lever on the left side of the chamber and pull it. Whenever you're ready, Kane. Let's see what you've got. Identification of psionic agent Kane verified. Please make your way to the center of the chamber and prepare for training simulation level zero. Commence training simulation. Level zero. Begin. Go ahead and use the Star Blast talent on one of the side targets, please. Sure thing. Remarkable. Simply remarkable. Okay, great. 
Now, uh, could you go ahead and use the star shower talent on one of the side targets? All right. Holy crap! Very nice indeed. Now how about giving us a little sample of the eyes of Ra talent? You got it. Awesome. That's great, Agent. Now, would you mind using that shield talent you picked up? Okay. That one will definitely help out our psionic agents. Wow, that totem sure is powerful. Attention all personnel. There has been a breach of the psionic detention wing on level 3. Repeat, there has been a breach of the psionic detention wing on level 3. All available units are to report to level 3 immediately. What's going on? What happened? There's been an emergency lockdown. It'll just take a second for me to shut down the training program. Hey fellas, what's going on up there? Nothing to worry about, Kane. I'm just shutting down the training program. Hurry up! We can't have one of our best field agents stuck in the training chamber while we're under attack! Make your way to the center of the chamber and prepare for training simulation level 999. Uh oh. What do you mean? Uh oh. I thought you said you took that program out. It has no safety measures. Uh, Kane, you're gonna want to get out of there immediately. The doors stay locked until the training program is over. Commence training simulation level 900. still in one piece. That makes two of us. Now what the hell is going on? Meet me outside and I'll fill you in. What's up? I'm not clear on the details, but they say there's been a break-in over in the detention wing. Probably a group of thugs trying to spring a buddy of theirs or something. Are they still here? I don't know. All of the roving units have mobilized for support. Well, then I better get down there and see what's up. I'm sure they won't want any psionic agents down there. They'll definitely be using the psi suppressant grenades, and you won't want any part of that. We'll see. Hey, who broke in? I don't know. But he's powerful enough to bust into the detention wing. He? I thought it was a whole group. There's only one psionic I can think of who can single-handedly break into our detention wing. Wait, you don't think it's... You better hope not. What happened? I was on my way up to the detention wing, when out of nowhere there was an explosion, and this thing fell right on me. It looks too big to lift. Maybe I can destroy it. Just be careful not to hit me. Thanks, Agent. I owe you a big time. Why don't you head on up to the detention wing and see if you can help out? Here, you'll need this. Kay, are you headed over to the detention wing? Yeah, where are you headed? I'm gonna make sure the chief is alright. 
Okay. Well, I'll catch up with you a little later then. Sure thing. Just be careful over there. They'll be using psi suppressants. Come on, Strauss. Who do you think you're talking to here? Just be careful, okay? Aye. Right. So what's the plan, Sergeant? Go home, Agent. This is a SWAT operation now. We don't need any psionic support. I don't think you understand what you're up against. I know exactly what we're up against. The same thing we're always up against. Psionic freaks with too much power for their own good. The last thing we need is more of you guys running around. Hey man, we're on the same side. If I was you, I'd be grateful for any help I could get. Fine. But just stay the hell out of my way. Now you know that guy must have lettered in track. If you have an access card for the detention wing, you can use it here, Agent. Now to see who's responsible for all of this. What makes you think you can do that? This time, I've got some help. We're gonna take you apart, cop. This is gonna be fun. Any last words before you're liquefied? Yeah, how would you like yourself cooked? Medium or burnt to a crisp? Agent Kane, can you give us a hand here? Sure, what do you need? Group 7 needs assistance up on level 3, so I'm taking a few of my men to help out. Now I need you to guard this boy and do not let anything happen to him. No offense, but I don't think babysitting a boy is fully utilizing my skill set. Maybe I should head up to level 3 instead. Negative. I've been given specific orders to protect this boy at all costs and with any means available. You're the best we've got, Kane, so you're it. All right, I'll keep an eye on him for you. Thanks. Rodriguez, Anderson, I want you two to assist Agent Kane. Yes, sir. So what's your name, kid, and why are you so important? My name is Bobby. I don't know why I'm important, 
I guess it's because I have special powers like you do. Trust me, your powers are nothing like mine. That man who broke in is looking for me. What? Nah, he's probably here to get one of his bad friends out of jail. And don't worry, we'll take care of him. No, I'm sure he's after me. He thinks I'm important too. And what makes you think that? Ah, oh, there he is! What? What the? Should have known. You got a lot of nerve showing your face around here. That isn't a very warm reception for your own brother. How long's it been, Ken? Not long enough. I see you're still a lapdog for the DNPC. Really, Kane, it's so beneath you. You should embrace your power, not apologize for it. Come with me and be with your own kind. After all, we are the next evolutionary step. No thanks. I'm happy right here making sure psychos like you don't get out of hand. What a shame. Well, I'm sure you'll eventually come around. Now give me the boy and I'll be on my way. The only thing you're taking is a beating. Kane, do you actually think you can beat me? You'd probably just lose control and kill a bunch of innocent people. And we wouldn't want that now. So why don't you just give me the boy? If you want the boy, you're gonna have to go through me. Fine. This shouldn't take long. Try to hold him off. I'm gonna see if I can find a way out. Thanks, kid. That was close. Right through here. Just use your mind to push the obstacles out of the way. I don't know how to do that. What? I thought you were supposed to be all super powerful. I am. I just don't have a talent that can do that. <laughs> really? Wow. Okay, I'll give it to you. I'm gonna go around and open the door for you. I'll meet you on the roof. We should go up to the helipad and wait for the SWAT. Okay. Ah, it's him! I see you haven't forgotten how to turn tail and run, brother. I just needed to regroup. Face it, Kane, you can't beat me. Now make it easy on yourself and give me the boy. The only way you're gonna get this boy is over my dead body. Have it your way. Be careful, Kane. The fence is on.
something around here that can hurt me. Suppressing grenades! But sir, we'll hit Agent Kane! We have no choice! We have to neutralize his psionic ability! Ready? Fire! Don't think this is over, brother. Great job, Kane. We'll take it from here. Thanks, mister. Looks like I missed all the excitement. You sure did. Abel decided to pay us a little visit. Your brother? My foster brother. 
Well, I hate to send you back out into the field so soon, but the Chief wants us to go ahead with our next mission while they put things back together here. Okay. What are the details? While you were in the field last night, there was a break-in at Eichen Pharmaceuticals. We have reason to believe that Adrian Starr may be involved. Isn't he that fruity, egocentric magician? What would he want with Eichen? I don't know, but we want you to go to his theater and question him. Okay. Oh, and by the way, we've created a version of Ms. Divine's shield talent that is more suited to your totem. It may come in handy. Great. Thanks. I'll see you downstairs. We have a car waiting for you. sent downtown to question the legendary illusionist Adrian Starr regarding his possible involvement with a break-in that occurred at Icon Pharmaceuticals and to see if there is any connection between the two events. So tell me again why we think Adrian Starr might be involved with the break-in at Icon Pharmaceuticals. Several years ago, Mr. Starr volunteered to be one of Dr. Eichen's psionic test subjects. Once Starr was in the program, his natural discipline and overwhelming desire to learn resulted in him becoming the most powerful psionic in the group. So he was a good student. What does that have to do with anything? One day, Mr. Starr just vanished from the research facility. His disappearance was accompanied by rumors that he had taken some of Eichen's psionic booster serum with him. Later, he resurfaced as the world's greatest illusionist that we all know today. I still don't see why he'd go back to Eichen's pharmaceuticals. As you know, Dr. Eichen is constantly working on newer and more powerful versions of her psionic booster serum. Perhaps Mr. Starr just wanted to improve his act, so to speak. I suppose that's possible. So you want me to question Adrian Starr and see what I can find out? Exactly. But be careful not to underestimate his psionic ability. He is, after all, the world's greatest illusionist. Yeah, whatever. No, it's true. I've seen him perform at least ten times. He's amazing. Have you ever seen him do that glass box escape thing? It's awesome. First, they raise him up into this huge glass box. Look, why don't you just keep your eyes on the road and let us do the talking back here, all right? Jeez, sorry. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, we'll drop you off a few blocks from the Grand Theater. Adrian has a performance later this afternoon, so you'll probably only have a few hours before he goes on stage. Your controller should be in touch with you shortly. Oh, and you might want to watch your step around here. This can be a pretty rough area. Thanks, but I'm pretty sure I can handle the local riffraff. Kane here. Hey, it's Frost. I assume you were debriefed on the way? Yeah, I know what I gotta do. Good. Now the theater will probably be closed for rehearsal until showtime this afternoon, so you'll most likely have to find an alternative way in. Adrian always takes an active role in rehearsal, so once you're inside, you should have no problem finding him. Got it. Hey, what happened with that kid from last night? His name was Bobby, right? I think so. You know, it's funny. They immediately transported him out of headquarters and have been really tight-lipped about who he is and why he's so important. I was thinking he may have been a key witness to some sort of crime. I don't know. See what you can find out about him. I got a strange feeling he's somehow connected to all of this. Sure thing. You'd better get going. All right. Talk to you later. Hey, man. You don't look like you're from around here. Yeah, you ain't from around here. Wow, you guys are really observing, aren't you? Maybe you don't understand the situation here. You see, this is our turf. 
Yeah, this is our turn. Look, I don't want any trouble, but if you mess with me, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. So if you know what's good for you, you step aside, take your friends with you. No, I don't think so, man. You see, we own these streets, and you should show us some respect. Yeah, show us some respect. Sorry, fellas, I don't respect thugs. Well, maybe you respect this. You, you, Dale Carrera has got to be the hottest game show host ever. Who enters my store? Someone in search of something, perhaps? Maybe. That depends on what you have. Plenty, man. Come to the counter and take a look. See what you like. That item will increase a person's ability to withstand damage. But unfortunately, I am holding it for another customer. That's the old claw computer game from long, long ago, when DVDs were popular. It's from my personal collection and still in the original shrink wrap. It's a classic. Oh yeah, that pirate cat. Cool idea for a character, but I just don't play 2D side-scrollers anymore. What about that? Oh, you have a good eye. That's a very powerful item. It grants its possessor the ability to block off enemies with a wall of bones. It's very rare, very special. How much you want for it? Ha ha ha, no man. This item can't be bought with money. Well, what do you want for it then? I tell you what, you look like a man who can get things done. How about you do me a favor? What kind of favor? Nothing too difficult for a man like you. I'm listening. There is a church not far from here. It is said that within the church grounds there rests a holy relic that the man I work for greatly desires. He would look very favorably upon me if I could get it for him. For this favor, I would gladly part with the item you want. Why don't you just go to the church and get it yourself? I am forbidden to walk on holy ground, so someone else must get it for me. Is there anything else you could tell me about this relic? I do know that the secret of the relic's exact location lies hidden within the church itself. Okay, it's a deal. Good, I'll be waiting. There seem to be more and more psionic criminals these days. I just love to be one of Adrian Starr's showgirls. Adrian Starr's 
nothing but a big phony. My boyfriend always says that I miss my true calling as a phone psychic. in the song, but I only see four bells on the altar. Sure, maybe if I could magically make another bell appear out of thin air, then I might be able to play it better. Yeah, right. Locked. How am I supposed to get in there? Hey, old timer. Do you know how to get inside that church? Of course I do. You walked through the front door. I see all timers hasn't claimed your sense of humor. How do I unlock the door? Well, I've seen him use a key to unlock it. Do you know where I might find this key? No, but my pappy had an old saying for when you wanted to visit the house of the Lord. Oh, and what was that? You gotta make sure the women folk are sitting up straight and the men are laid back. What the heck is that supposed to mean? I haven't the foggiest idea. He never even went to church. Thanks, you've been a tremendous help. wonder what this key unlocks. And Kane parted the front door.
must be the relic the shopkeeper wanted. Hey, what are you doing in there? We'll kill you for desecrating our church! Yeah, I got it. What does your boss want it for anyway? Oh, he's just a collector like me. May I have it? Sure, but don't you have something of mine? Of course, man. Here you go. Hey man, since you did such a good job getting the relic for me, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine. Why would I want to meet a friend of yours? I think the two of you have a lot in common. Like what? I don't like to speak for my friends. You should go talk to him in person. Where can I find this friend of yours? My friend will be waiting for you in the parking lot on the other side of the park. Alright, see you around. Take it easy, man. He's here! Huh? Temperature readings just shot off the charts. What happened? I think I just met the guy Priscilla Devine said would destroy the world. Who? Golgotham? Yeah. He rose up out of the street and asked me to help welcome his master to this world. Something about cleansing the world and starting a new existence. Really? So what did you say? I told him I wasn't interested. But when I refused to help him, he summoned creatures that I think were the Queen's guards from the Psychic Link. And then he left. Well, that would explain your high vitals. I'll see what I can find out about him. Okay, well, I still need to get into the theater to question Adrian Starr, so I'll talk to you later.
Kane. Agent Kane, it's good to speak with you again. Who is this? Like I said before, it's not important. Look, I don't have time for this. No, please wait. I know that it must have been difficult for you, but you should know that you made the right decision by terminating Miss Divine. She didn't leave me much of a choice. I have a proposition for you. If you have the time, I'd like to speak with you in person. All right. When and where do you want to meet? As soon as possible. Meet me at the garage behind the tire shop. Hello, Kane. It's nice to finally meet you. You said this was important, so get on with it. Of course. I'll get right to the point. I'd like to know that we can count on you to help us again in the future. Have I helped you before? Yes, your excellent work in taking down Ms. Divine. Let's get something straight. I did that only because I was forced to. Rationalize it however you like, Agent. The truth is you've already been a tremendous help to us. That's just great. And who the hell is us? You can think of us as a high-level enforcement group. Wow, that explains everything. Look, if you're finished now, I've got work to do. Yes, of course. Before you go, I have something for you. What's that? Consider it a token of our appreciation. Take care. I'll be in touch. I'll move out to that Faro Village trailer park I've been hearing so much about. That game show they do over at the theater is just plain sick. One wrong answer and you're dead? Who could possibly enjoy watching that? I can't wait.
wait to go on the Iken Pharmaceuticals tour tomorrow. It's going to be incredible. Oh man, I can't wait until tickets go on sale for tomorrow's show. Star is awesome. I, I sure hope he picks me for one of his car tricks, because I know how they work. Really? And how's that? Always pick a card from the bottom of the deck. Magicians never expect that. And always make them cut the deck seven times. <laughs> Messes them up every time. You need to get a life. You just don't appreciate true showmanship, man. Another way in. a trick? Sure, why not? Great. I think you're gonna like this. Pick a card, any card, and keep it, but don't look at it. All right, how many times do you want me to cut the deck? Six. Okay. Now what else would you like me to do? Cut the deck one more time? Shuffle the deck? Or sing a little song about magic? Cut the deck one more time. Sure. Your card is the Queen of Hearts. Sorry, you got the wrong card. What? That's just not possible. Well, this deck is obviously defective and of no use to me. Here, take it. Gee, thanks. Kane. Hey Kane, have you found a way into the theater yet? Yep, but no sign of Mr. Star yet. Well, he should be in there somewhere. Don't worry, I'll find him. Sorry, sir, this bathroom is out of order. You'll have to use the other one. Now, where did I leave those bolt cutters? Do not to let anyone in during rehearsal. Sorry, Mr. Star, it won't happen again. Hey, pretty boy. I'm Agent Kane with the DMPC. I need to ask you a few questions. I don't feel like answering questions right now. Why don't you take a look at one of my newest acts instead? Ladies! <laughs>
This is Kane. Kane, I just detected large amounts of psionic activity there. Did you find Mr. Star? Oh, I found him all right, and I had the pleasure of meeting his showgirls. Really? You must have enjoyed that. Actually, they were a little too aggressive for my taste. That's a first. So what did he have to say about the break-in? Unfortunately, he went backstage before I could question him, so I'm going to try to find a way back there. Sounds good. I need to speak with Mr. Star. Mr. Star isn't seeing any visitors. Death trap, huh? Maybe that'll lead backstage. Hey, can I borrow your bolt cutters? What are you gonna give me for them? What do you want? I don't know. Do you know any card tricks? Actually, I do. Great, let's see it. Okay, uh, pick a card. Wait, you weren't supposed to look at it. Well, why not? Uh, I don't know. It's part of the trick. So, should we start over? Nah, we'll just keep going. Uh, how many times do you want me to cut the deck? And don't even try to say anything over two. Uh, oh, okay. Two, I guess. Um, didn't I say to cut the deck twice? I think once is plenty. Yeah, you're right. Once is fine. All right, now let's see. Uh, do you want me to cut the deck again, shuffle the deck again, or sing a... Oh, hell no. I ain't singing no song. So one of the first two. Uh, shuffle? Aw, oh, man. Come on. Just give me the damn bolt cutters. All right, all right. Calm down. Here you go. I know just the place for these. This should do the trick. Having received little to no cooperation from the egocentric Adrian Starr, Kane was forced to find an alternate route backstage and must now navigate his way through the theater's death trap exhibit if he ever intends to question the world-famous illusionist. Let's see where this leads. You're not supposed to be in here. The death trap won't be open for a couple of weeks. You're going to have to leave. Uh, I'm just here to inspect the construction. That's funny. You don't look much like an inspector to me. Sorry, nobody gets in. I can't believe I'm stuck working the booth again. I sure wish my agent would call me back about that audition. Hey, there's a phone call for you out in the lobby. Really? Who is it? I think it's your agent. He said something about the results of your audition. I think he's still on hold. Oh my gosh, this could be my big break. I'll see you around. Damn, this mind reading stuff is fun. Damn, what the hell is this? Yeah. 
Hi, Kane. How are things going in there? Oh, pretty good if you don't count the spinning floors and the giant eight-foot swords shooting out of the walls. What? I'm going through this place in the theater called the Death Trap to try to get backstage. Wow, and I always thought those names were just clever marketing gimmicks. Apparently not. Well, just be sure to watch your step in there. Definitely. Please help me. I'm I'm hurt pretty bad here. I'll help you if you can help me get backstage. Deal. What happened in there? We were rehearsing, and Adrian's prized tiger, Kenna, got a little out of control and bit me. Now they all have me cornered, and I'm afraid if I move, they'll kill me. So, do you want me to kill the cats? No, no. And keep your voice down. Loud noises make the tigers nervous, and I'm the only one who can get you backstage. I. Right, then what do you want me to do? This cage is locked, and the key is in the next room. If you can get the key and unlock the cage, then I can get out of here and help you get backstage. This had better not take too long. Here, you'll need this. Hope this isn't another car trick. Baby, wanna dance? Sorry, not much of a dancer. Ah,、oh, what a shame. Guess we'll have to kill you then. Something tells me I'm gonna need to find some more cars. I found the ballroom. Would you like to see our latest routine? No, not really. Ah,、oh, too bad, 'cause we're gonna show you anyway. <laughs> I'm tired of pushing these heavy boxes around all day. I don't even know what's in them. Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that sure would make my job easier. Should probably move away from that buzz saw. Adrian says we're his favorite girls. Want to see why? No, but I bet you're gonna show me anyway. That's right. <laughs> This right here. say anything. Let's just fight. Okay. <laughs> This goes here. This key doesn't open the cage after all that. I'm gonna be a little upset. Better work. Thank heavens you made it. I was about ready to give up on you. Next time, put your damn keys on a keychain. Thanks for the tip. Now get me the heck out of here before these tigers get hungry. And be careful. Whoa, that was close. Thank you. You saved my life.
All right, I've kept my end of the bargain. Now let's go. Sure, but first take this talent. It's the only thing that will help you give Adrian a taste of his own medicine. A little revenge, huh? Why not? Follow me. Hey there, do you want to see something really cool? No. Okay, your life. Okay, people, we're on in five. Let's get ready. So what's going on here? We're just getting ready for the show. What show? Trivia Insanity. We're on in a few minutes. Oh, will Mr. Star be on the show? Of course, he's always on the show. Great. I'll just talk to him right after the show. After the show? You're in the show. What? Oh, oh damn! Oh, ah. Upon finally reaching the backstage entrance, Kane was rewarded for his persistence with a sharp blow to the back of the head. It will now be forced to participate in a Live from the Grand Theater downtown, your host of Trivia Insanity, Dale Carrera. Thanks, Bob. Hello, and welcome to another exciting edition of Trivia Insanity, the only game show in the world that has the slogan, One wrong answer, and you're dead. That's right. Trivia Insanity is the game show where contestants try to stay alive by correctly answering a series of general knowledge questions. Any contestant who actually lives beyond the final round will have the honor of taking part in a performance with the greatest showman alive today, Adrian Starr. I'm your host, Dale Carrera, and without further ado, let's meet our contestants. Bob? 
Thanks, Dale. Our first contestant is a good old boy from Waco, Texas. He's single and unemployed, but that doesn't slow him down. He loves his dog and his double-barreled shotgun named Lucille. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Billy Joe Bailey. I, I, I don't want to be here. I ain't never said nothing about being on no game show. Please, just let me go. Our second contestant is a servant of the people. He's an agent with the DNPC who is long on muscle and short on patience. Everybody put your hands together for Agent Kane. What's going on? I don't have time for games. If someone doesn't let me out of here and point me in the direction of Adrian Starr right now, I'm going to start tearing this place apart. I ain't playing. Our third and final contestant is an accountant from Modesto, California, who spends his free time playing video games and cataloging his extensive collection of Adrian Star memorabilia. Please give it up for Skip Robertson. Thanks. I just want to say that I'm a big fan of the show, and I can't wait to meet Adrian Star. Yeah. All right. Let's go over the rules of the game. I'll be asking each of you a question, and it's up to you to try and answer it correctly. If you answer the question correctly, you will move on. But just remember, one wrong answer, and you're dead. Bob, tell us what our contestants will receive today. All contestants will receive the official home version of Trivia Insanity. The winner of today's show, if we have one, will go on to participate in one of the greatest spectacles on earth with none other than Adrian Star. Man, you have got to be kidding me. Okay, let's get started. Contestant number one, here's your first question. In what year did the flag of the United States receive its 51st star? incorrect and you know the rules one wrong answer and you're dead wait what's going on kind of sick show is this all right contestant number two hopefully you'll do a little better than contestant number one if you know what i mean here's your first question what is the name of adrian star's prized white tiger Kenna. Correct! Contestant number three, it's your turn, and here's your first question. What does the medical acronym PPP stand for? That would be permanent psionic psychosis, Dale. That's right! You know what that sound means. It's the end of round one. But before we move on to round two, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Bob. Thanks, Dale. Today's show of Trivia Insanity is brought to you by Iken Pharmaceuticals. Iken Pharmaceuticals, working for a better tomorrow. Back to you, Dale. Okay, let's move on to round two. Contestant number two, here's your next question. What is the name of the group of psionic radicals led by Priscilla Devine? What kind of general knowledge question is that? Just answer the question, please. The Eye of Ra. That's absolutely right! Contestant number three, here's your next question. What was the original working title of the classic computer game, Sanity? Let's see, that was over 30 years ago... It was a great game, and I'm pretty sure the working title was... Mindbender. That's correct! Contestant number two, here's your next question. What gives humans the ability to use psionic talents? In utero injection of psionic booster serum. That's correct! We would have also accepted being naturally born from two psionic parents. Contestant number three, here's your next question. What is the name of the most powerful psionic shield known to man? That's easy, Dale. It's called the Shield of Storm. Ooh, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. What? Everybody, let's give Skip a hand for playing so well today. No, wait. I want a ruling. I know I'm right. It's the Shield of Storm. I'm sorry, Skip. But the correct answer was the Shield of Truth. Impossible! 
That's a child's totem. How could that be? Well, contestant number two, it looks like you're moving on to the final round. Swell. Bob, let's bring out our star performer and final opponent for contestant number two. Ladies and gentlemen, our star performer is a local boy who made it in the big time. You all know him as the greatest illusionist in the world. Please welcome back the greatest showman alive today, Adrian Starr. I cannot believe it. Thank you, thank you. You are too kind. Nice to have you back as always, Adrian. It's good to be back, Dave. Hey, Siegfried, I need to ask you a few questions. All right, let's move on. Remember, contestant number two, all you have to do in this round is answer three questions correctly, and you will have the honor of taking part in one of Adrian Starr's most death-defying escapes. As always, we'll begin the final round with Mr. Starr. Adrian, here's your first question. Who is the greatest illusionist on Earth? Well, Dale, if I'm not mistaken, that would be me. Yes, that's absolutely correct. Oh, uh, tell me that's not really his question. Contestant number two, here's your question. What is the name of the beautiful park located at the center of our fair city? Clear Point Park. That's right! Adrian, here's your next question. Who was the man that was three times voted best live performer by Magician's Quarterly Magazine? Oh, this is a little embarrassing, but uh, I'm wondering if this great performer could possibly be me? That's correct! Oh, come on, man. This show is rigged. Would it kill you to ask him a real question? Contestant number two, here's your question. What does DNPC stand for? Department of National Psionic Control. That's right! Adrian, here's your final question. Who is the sexiest person alive? There are a lot of very sexy people in the world, but uh, I'm going to have to guess that it is me? Unbelievable! That's absolutely correct! Correct? Now how's that leather pants wearing, Eastern European sounding, tiger loving, bamboo shoot of a man, the sexiest person alive? And damn, what's up with that hair? Contestant number two. Answer this correctly, and you will get to perform with Mr. Star in one of the greatest escapes ever seen. Man, I don't even like magic. Here is your final question. What is the name of Dr. Joan Eichen's psionically gifted youth? The Children of Tomorrow. Children of Tomorrow is absolutely correct. Congratulations, contestant number two. You've stayed alive, you've matched wits with our star performer, and now it's showtime. Great. Can I ask him some questions now? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, viewers at home, prepare yourselves to be dazzled, amazed, and thrilled by one of the greatest escapes ever performed, the world-famous and now legendary Escape from the Glass Box. said he would be in here, so where's he at? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the world of illusion. This guy's not playing with full death. And now watch as I escape from this glass box completely unharmed.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Look, can I just ask you a few questions? And now for the grand finale. Now, what did that tiger guy say again? Something about using a talent to give Adrian a taste of his own medicine? to ask me a few questions? Finally. But no more magic. But the world is full of magic. Whatever. There was a break-in at Eichen Pharmaceuticals last night. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that now, would you? Hmm. The last time I had anything to do with Eichen was for a children's charity magic show. Really? And when was that? Oh, it must have been a year ago at least. So you don't know anything about the break-in? I didn't say that exactly. I simply said that I hadn't been there in a long time. Then tell me what happened at Icon Pharmaceuticals last night, or do we need to cancel a few of your performances so you can talk to the chief back at headquarters? Uh, that won't be necessary. I believe Dr. Icon has in her possession something an associate of mine wants. Who is this associate? What do they want from Iken? I think you know him. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, you're related to him. You mean Abel? We're not related. He's my foster brother. Really? So it was Abel at Iken Pharmaceuticals. That's interesting, because he also broke into headquarters last night. He was after a boy named Bobby. A boy, huh? Yes, a boy. Is that what Abel wanted from Iken? I don't know. Keep in mind that Dr. Eichen conducts research that the general public is not aware of. I think it would be safe to say that her work is progressing nicely. That doesn't tell me a whole lot. Well, that's all that I know. If you need more information, then I suggest you pay a visit to Eichen Pharmaceuticals yourself. I'm sure that the answers you seek lie somewhere in the facility. Okay, thanks for your time. No, thank you, Agent Kane, for your wonderful performance this afternoon. Whenever you tire of chasing bad guys, you may want to consider a career in show business. here. Hey, have you talked to Mr. Starr yet? Yeah, I did. He said he had nothing to do with it. And you believe him? I think so. He told me that Abel was responsible for the break-in. Abel? Wow, he was really busy. That makes two break-ins. So what did Abel want from Iken? I don't know, but I got a hunch it may have been the boy. Now that you mention it, I was able to find out that the boy was transferred from Iken Pharmaceuticals last night. Hmm. I think I'm going to head over there tomorrow morning and see what I can find out. I'll have a car ready for you.
Canadian Star provided little information regarding the two break-ins, but he did suggest that the answers to Kane's questions might be found somewhere within Icon Pharmaceuticals. With that in mind, Kane decided to pay a visit to the facility and question Dr. Icon personally. Again. So, how did you like our last encounter, Kane? I have to admit, summoning in the Queen's Guards is a cute trick, but it's gonna take a little more than a handful of dogmen to slow me down. That was only meant to get your attention. Now that I have it, maybe you will reconsider my request. And what request might that be? I told you, Kane. I need your power to will. Master to this world. And I told you I'm not interested in world domination. Then perhaps you need more time to contemplate your decision. This time, I'll leave you with a better example of my power. disturbance again? It was in the parking lot. Let's go check it out. Yeah? Hey, I just got some pretty high psionic readings. What happened there? Go Gotham decided to show up again. Really? What did he want this time? The same thing as last time. He said he needed me to help him welcome his master into this world. Did he summon the Queen's guards in again? Yeah, but this time he summoned some of Adrian Starr's showgirls, too. Are you sure? That kind of cross-totemic control has never actually been witnessed. I just got done fighting him. Trust me on this one. Wow. We have got to find out who that guy is. You go ahead and do that and let me know what you find out. I'm gonna go inside. Okay, remember that Icon Pharmaceuticals is a public facility that's loaded with civilians. So don't hurt anyone, and don't draw any unnecessary attention to yourself. I'll do my best to blend in. I really envy these people. You can never recapture the magic of the first time on the Icon Tour. Man, Joan Icon is a total babe. Excuse me, but why are you trying to read my mind? Man, I need to use the bathroom bad. Marble floors? No wonder they charge so much for surgery. I wonder if 
Ikon has ever tried to engineer the perfect man. If anybody tries anything funny, I'm gonna drop him. Sorry, only Ikon Pharmaceuticals employees are allowed beyond this point. Man, I need to use the bathroom bad. Hi there. If you're going on the tour today, make sure that you don't lose your visitor pass because you won't be able to participate without it, okay? I can't believe I'm finally here on the Icon tour. I just can't believe that they inject that psionic booster serum into a fetus without giving it a choice. You know, for 75 bucks a pop, this tour had better be something more than just walking by a few display cases. I hope we'll actually get to meet Dr. Eichen on this tour. People, people, may I have your attention, please? My name is Tanya, and I'll be your guide on today's tour of Eichen Pharmaceuticals, okay? Now, we're just about to start the tour, so if you need to use the restroom, please do so now. Remember, you won't be able to participate on the tour without your visitor pass, so please have it ready, okay? Okay! Finally! Hmm, I have an idea. Kane here. Agent Kane, I trust that you're having a good day. Yeah, I suppose. What do you want from me? Kane, I'm going to get right to the point. I know you recently received some information about Dr. Eichen. In fact, that's probably why you're there now. I'm listening. Anything you uncover inside would be best kept to yourself. Dr. Eichen has done a valuable service to this agency and this nation. We all owe her a debt of gratitude, and we simply can't afford to have her good name damaged in any way. You understand, don't you? Look, I'm here to find out why Abel broke into Eichen Pharmaceuticals and headquarters, regardless of whether it affects Dr. Eichen's reputation or not. Ah, I had hoped that you would be more understanding of our position. The road ahead is going to be very difficult for you, Kane. Try and remember who your real friends are. Hey, what size shirt do you wear? I wear an extra large. Why? Not quite my size, but it'll do. Do you have your visitor pass, sir? I sure do. Great, may I have it? Yeah, here you go. Enjoy the tour. This is Kane. Hey Kane, are you inside Icon Pharmaceuticals yet? Kind of. I'm going undercover with a public tour group right now. That sounds like a good plan. I'll talk to you later then. Oh, wait a sec. I forgot to tell you, that government agent guy contacted me again. Really? When? He called me a little while ago, but I forgot to mention it until now. Sorry about that. No problem. What did he want this time? He wanted me to keep any evidence I found that could potentially incriminate Dr. Eichen to myself. Hmm. So it seems that Dr. Eichen has some friends in high places. I'll see if I can find anything out about that. Alright, I better get going. Okay, bye. Hello, and welcome to the public tour of Icon Pharmaceuticals. I know you're all anxious to get going, 
but this is a huge facility with a state-of-the-art security system, so please be sure not to stray from the groove, okay? All right, people, we're going to begin the tour by walking through the Eichen Pharmaceuticals Museum of Science. Then we'll head upstairs and see a few of the labs where real live experiments are being conducted. And if we're lucky, we may even get to visit with a few of the highly skilled scientists on staff. Okay, before we move on, do any of you have any questions? Yeah, when do we get lunch? Oh, I'm sorry, there won't be any meals served on the tour. You really should have eaten something when we stopped for food earlier. Oh, great. For centuries, mankind has pondered the complexities and potential power of nature's most enigmatic tool, the human brain. For decades, scientists have been trying to harness the full potential of the mind with only limited success. That is, until a young woman named Joan Eichen arrived on the scene and forever changed the course of human evolution. Wow, being this close to THE Dr. Eichen is so exciting it's making me dizzy. It's probably from something you ate. What was that? I said this tour is great. Well, thank you. All right, everyone, please follow me. Next, we're going to take a look at Dr. Eichen's psionic booster serum. The first version of Dr. Eichen's psionic booster serum can be seen here. While this version of the serum granted test subjects with unimaginable mental abilities, it also proved to be extremely unstable and caused them to go completely insane. Dr. Eichen found that injections given in utero were less likely to cause side effects because the minds of in utero test subjects were still developing and were able to adapt to the powerful effects of the serum. Through years of hard work and refinement, more stable versions of the serum have been developed. But the serum must still be administered in utero because a more developed human mind will almost always reject the serum. Dr. Eichen's hope is that someday the serum will progress to the point at which people of all ages that are in good health and of sound mind can benefit from it. Okay, before we move on, are there any questions? I have one. What kind of mother would actually allow her unborn child to be injected with that stuff? Yeah, what's up with that? Good question. Actually, fetuses that receive the serum are not even carried in a human female. Instead, they are genetically engineered and born in a specially designed incubator, which we will be seeing a little later on the tour. Everyone, please follow me over to the surgical tools display, okay? In addition to the psionic booster serum, Eichen Pharmaceuticals have also pioneered technology in the field of genetic manipulation and fetal surgery. If you look in front of you, you will see the very tools used for these operations. Not only do these tools allow doctors to perform the delicate surgery necessary to enhance the lives of unborn children, but they are also the means by which the psionic booster serum is administered. The results of Dr. Eichen's work can be seen in children that are now healthier than ever and have an unprecedented decrease in birth defects. If there are no questions, we'll go ahead and move on to the gene laser, okay? Okay. The gene laser developed by Eichen Labs has given medical science the ability to manipulate and modify the genetic code of a human being. This has resulted in the eradication of diseases and defects at the cellular level that have plagued humanity for centuries. Wow, that gene laser sounds amazing. Well, that's because it is amazing. Without the gene laser, the average human lifespan would still be under 90 years. All right, if nobody has any questions, then we'll take a look at the advanced incubation chamber, okay? Okay. The advanced incubation chamber is one of Dr. Eichen's crowning achievements. This device enables a fetus to be developed in a synthetic womb that can be carefully monitored without any risk of miscarriage. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, um, 
what exactly happens to these kids after they're born? All of the children that are genetically engineered by Dr. Riken are raised and nurtured until adulthood in one of her many foster care facilities. And what happens to them after that? In most cases, these people are integrated into mainstream society where they lead happy, productive lives just like you and me. Are there any other questions? Okay then. I'm sure you will all be very interested to see this last exhibit here in the museum. So please follow me. Our final stop in the Eichen Pharmaceuticals Museum of Science is an example of the awesome powers of a human mind enhanced by the psionic booster serum. This small, twisted piece of metal is all that remains of a full-sized tank that was destroyed by a single mental blast from an advanced psionic. Please, people, no pictures. There are photos and even replicas of this exhibit in the gift shop at the end of the tour. Oh, come on. There's no way a human could do that to a tank without some kind of weapon. Oh, believe me, it can happen. Huh? How do you know that? Uh, I read it somewhere, in a science journal. Oh. Okay, if we're all done here, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so we should probably get moving, okay? Okay. Follow me, please. We're going upstairs now. Okay, if you look ahead, you will see our state-of-the-art security system. Those lights you see up ahead are equipped with specially designed sensors that can detect almost any living organism. The only way you could get by them undetected would be if you could somehow make yourself invisible. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and disable this section of the security system so we can continue on with the tour, okay? Okay, everyone, please follow me. The poster that you see here represents one of Dr. Eichen's latest endeavors called The Children of Tomorrow. This exciting new program only admits children who score in the upper 1% of the general population on the Eichen psionic aptitude test. Wow, that must be a pretty small group. Yes, it is. The goal of the program is to provide these children with the unrestricted environment they need to be creative and thrive in today's society and hopefully grow into the world leaders of tomorrow. Okay, everyone, let's just head down the hall here and see Dr. Eichen's revolutionary brain containers. Here, on either side of the corridor, we can see two versions of Dr. Eichen's amazing brain containers. The first prototype, seen on the left here, was capable of keeping an unattached human brain animated for up to a full week. The container you see on the right is a far more advanced version that extended the life of the unattached brain to almost six months. Wow! What good is a brain if it doesn't have a body? Well, as I'm sure you all know, the human brain is a gigantic storage device containing an entire lifetime's worth of a person's memories, experiences, knowledge, thoughts, and ideas. Before the advent of the brain container, all of this information was simply lost once a person died. By keeping the brain animated, we have unlimited access to this previously unobtainable data. So you could, like, look through the mind of serial killers and see why they killed? Yes. This kind of information has already provided authorities with the missing facts they need to solve crimes and to determine mysterious causes of death. That's awesome. Yes, it is. And what's even more awesome is that we hope to someday be able to harness power from these brains. Okay, anyone with a fear or phobia will surely appreciate our next display. If you'll follow me, please.
Behind the glass, you will see the culmination of our efforts in combating many common irrational fears, otherwise known as phobias. Each of these drugs will completely cure a person suffering from a particular phobia. The orange one on the left cures people that suffer from arachnophobia. That's a fear of spiders, right? Correct. The red one cures people suffering from aviophobia. I have that one. That's fear of flying. Very good. The green one cures people that suffer from claustrophobia. Is that a fear of closets? Close. It's a fear of confined spaces. Oh. And the blue one on the far right offers a cure for people suffering from anglophobia. What the heck is that? Anglophobia is a fear of England and English culture. Too bad they don't have a cure for lame tourophobia. Okay, everyone, stay close and keep to your right. The hallway to the left leads to a group of scientific laboratories where top secret research is currently being conducted. For that reason, it is patrolled 24 hours a day by armed security guards. Damn. If I could direct your attention to the large photograph above us, this is a picture of Dr. Eichen accepting her first Nobel Peace Prize for her pioneering work in the field of genetic engineering. Okay, let's continue on. Before we take the elevator down, let's look at these last two exhibits. If you look on either side of the doorway here, you will see the latest and greatest in cybergenetic technology. The red-colored robot to my right is the CG-1000 suicide droid. Once this robot acquires an enemy target, the CG-1000 will pursue the target until it is within close proximity and then will detonate, terminating both itself and the enemy target. But perhaps the most impressive feature of the CG-1000 is that it is completely impervious to psionic attacks. Wait a minute. Did you just say that thing can't be damaged by psionic attacks? That's correct, sir. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Uh, yeah. The green-colored robot to my left is the CG-2000 psionic attack droid. Housed inside this robot is a genetically engineered brain that actually allows the CG-2000 to use psionic talents against its enemies. The only downside to having an artificial brain is that it makes the CG-2000 vulnerable to psionic attacks. Geez, those sound pretty advanced. Yeah, I heard that they're also working on a robot that can absorb psionic powers and use them against people. I suppose that's possible, but I haven't heard anything about it. Okay, that concludes this section of the tour. Is everyone having a good time so far? Okay, let's take the elevator down and we'll continue our tour. Hmm, the elevators don't seem to be working. Oh well, it's probably just a routine maintenance check. Why don't we take this opportunity to rest for a few minutes until they're working again, okay? Hmm. I think it's about time I ditched this tour and took a look around. Kane here. Hey, it's Frost. Have you found anything interesting? Not yet. Then what have you been up to in there? I've been busy. 
I just slipped away from the Ikin tour group so I could take a look around. Oh, I see. Is there anything I can do for you? Actually, security is really tight around here, so I'm gonna have to keep a low profile. But maybe you could try to dig up some blueprints of this place just in case I need some assistance later on. Okay, I'll see what I can dig up. Oh, you know what? I think I do remember hearing something about a top-secret laboratory located on one of the lower levels. I don't know if it's true, but you might want to check it out. All right, I'll do that. Great. I'll talk to you later. Are you the psionic test subject? Uh, yep. That's me, all right. Great. Are you new here? Because I don't think I've seen you before. Yeah, I, I guess I am. All right. Just go ahead and stand in the center of the room there and use your shield of science talent, and we'll get started. Shield of science, huh? You have got to be kidding me. Do you mean to tell me that they didn't even bother to equip you with the proper talent before sending you here? Well, they weren't sure which talent you guys wanted, and rather than make a mistake, they figured they'd leave it up to the professionals. I guess we are pretty professional here, huh? Okay, here you go. Just stand over there and use this whenever you're ready. Sometimes I wish I still had my old job developing and digitally enhancing photos for people. I wonder how many talents Dr. Eichen is going to have me reverse engineer before she transfers me downstairs. Being a scientist is definitely the way to go around here. I mean, if I had to sit in a dark room staring at a computer all day, waiting for someone else to finish what they were doing before I could even get started on my job, I'd kill someone. No, I'm not kidding. I would literally kill someone. Great job! We got all the readings we needed for the people in Station 6, so you're all done here. Hey Kev, let's go outside and play a little hacky sack before lunch, shall we? That may be the best idea I've heard all day. manage your anger, John. For God's sake, put down that gun, John. Oh my God, look what you've done, John. You're gonna go to jail, John. John. Oh, sorry about that. Why is it that every time I need to email results, the network goes down? I can't believe that I actually have to put them on a disc. Well, I am out of here. The guys in Station 7 can come over and get the disc themselves if they want. I'll take that. Hello. Someday the cheese is going to fall right off. 
called Beakerman's Cracker. <laughs> I know it's Beakerman, but it's so damn funny to see him get pissed off. Beakerman. What the hell kind of name is Beakerman anyway? <laughs> I'll bet the students had a field day with that one in med school. Ah, that must be the data I need. Oh, I can't believe that lazy bastard actually had a messenger bring it over for him. I mean, come on. They're right next door. Well, thanks. I'm gonna load this up and give Dr. Beakerman the go-ahead. All right, Dr. Beakerman. You're all set. I'm taking off. Thanks. And it's Beakerman. Go ahead and leave, Sarah. I'll finish up in here. Thanks, Dr. Beakerman. For the love of Pete, it's Beakerman. Oh, and since the staff parking lot was full this morning, I had to park in the public lot. And you know how I hate parking there. So could you please move my car before you leave? <laughs> Whatever. when there's work to be done. This could prove useful. Those engineers just sit behind their monitors all day long while we do all the real work. I swear, a monkey could replace both of them and still do a better job. I still can't believe they turned me down for the engineer position. With the incompetence I'm surrounded by every day, it's no wonder we're behind schedule. Well, it's about time. Finally, we can get on with this. Sorry, no time to talk. I've got work to do. Outs. And you know what? They'll be sitting right here on my desk until those lethargic slobs in Station 3 realize that calling us over and over again don't get things done any faster. Come on, Dan. We're out of here. Oh, I almost forgot. I need to go find a stapler for Dr. Richards later. Now wait, I have an idea. Why don't I take these over to Station 3? Hmm, I wonder if I can hook up auto speed redial within the company. Fuck oh, man, I should just quit and get a job programming video games. Those scientists think they're so special with their lab coats and their microscopes. If they're so brilliant, then why is it that we always have to spoon feed them the procedure steps for their meaningless experiments? Wow, the data printouts. And I was just about to call those guys again. Hey, since you're here, would you mind running these procedures over to Station 4? Well, I... Great. 
Oh, and uh, tell him to swap steps 4 and 8 and be sure to skip step 5. <laughs> Gus, let's roll. You know, I'm just not feeling the team atmosphere around here. Station 3. They sit in there all day, staring at their monitors, pretending to work with that smug look on their face. I just know they're in there playing grunts. Great, you brought the procedures. Now tell me, were there any special instructions for these? Yeah, swap steps 4 and 8, and be sure to skip step 5. Hmm, I'm not sure I entirely agree with that. Yeah, we should probably just go ahead and do step five then. Uh oh! Yeah, that's not good. We'd better go ahead and evacuate immediately. Those engineers just sit behind their monitors all day long while we do all the real work. I swear, a monkey could replace both of them and still do a better job. Tell me, do you know where the people in Station 4 went? I think something went wrong with their experiment. They said they had to evacuate. Well, we better go find them and see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Probably an error in the procedure steps again. Man, for all the work I'm doing here, they should put me on the payroll. intern. That's funny. I never approved a new lab intern. Who are you assigned to? Um, I'm assigned to the guys from Station One. Uh, you can go check it out if you want. I think I'll do that. If you could please just wait here for a moment. I'll be right back.
sneaking off of the Icon Pharmaceuticals public tour and assisting some of the research staff in their daily duties, Kane now finds himself down in the lower research level of the facility, where he hopes to find and question Dr. Icon. Hmm, I wonder what's down here. This is Kane. Hey, how's it going in there? Pretty good. I'm down in some kind of subterranean research center. So what have you found? I didn't really find anything useful on the main level. Hopefully I'll have better luck down here. Okay, but you might be careful who you talk to. If it's a higher security area, then I doubt people down there will buy the I accidentally wandered off the tour story. That's a good point. I'll keep that in mind. All right, see ya. Hang on, kid. I'm on my way. My name's Kane. What's going on here? What is this place? It's a place where Mother puts us to learn to fight and defend ourselves. Aren't you a little young for combat training? I don't know. All of us had to train here. All of us? Yes, this is where we live. Mother calls us her children of tomorrow, whatever that means. Who is your mother, kid? Her name is Joan. Joan Eichen? Yeah, but we all call her Mother. Do you know where she is? She works down in the place where the scary things are. Please don't make me go there, okay? Don't worry. You don't have to go there. Thanks. That place gives me the creeps. How'd you get in here anyway? They lead us in through that door, and they lock it so we have to go through the maze. I'm really afraid of those robots, but they said I had to learn to overcome my fears in order to survive. Well, don't sweat it, little guy. I'll get you out of here. Just follow me. Okay, but please don't let them hurt me. No problem, just stay close. Hang on a minute. Now we can go. Stand 
Camp here. Wow! How did you get to be so powerful? Genetics, kid. Genetics. So where's that scary place you were talking about earlier? It's on the next floor down. How do I get there? You have to go through Mother's office across the hall from here. There's a hidden passageway in there that leads to an elevator. That elevator goes down to where the scary things are. Great. Thanks, kid. Are you going to be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Thanks again for saving me, Mr. Kane. If you ever need any help, just let me know. All right, I'll do that. Try and stay away from them robots, okay? Okie dokie. Looks like I'm gonna need a little help here. Hey kid, I think I might need your help. Could you follow me? Sure thing. I need you to stand on the floor over there. Right here? Yep, yeah, that's perfect. Just stay there. Okay. May I help you? I'd like to speak to Dr. Eichen, please. I'm sorry. Dr. Eichen is out of the office at the moment. Do you know where I might be able to find her? No, I don't. Well, do you mind if I take a look around in her office? I'm sorry, sir, but you'll have to come back later.
I need you to get out from behind that desk and open the door to Dr. Eichen's office now. Are you serious? You better believe I'm serious. Now open that door. All right, all right. You don't have to yell. I'm not deaf, you know. Thanks. Now get out of here. And don't even think about notifying security. Yeah, whatever. Ah, yes. One big happy family. Hmm. What the heck is that thing they're holding? She's certainly well educated. I wonder what this is for. Why am I not surprised she has that picture in here? Son of a... the files uh yeah i just thought i'd see how they were organized before i got started great hey when you archive them be sure to cross-reference professor krebspawn and professor troy with dr eichen okay sure thing what was their connection again you know the artifact that professors krebspawn and troy found yeah but why don't you refresh my memory i wouldn't want to mess anything up sure Several years ago, Professors Krebspawn and Troy requested Dr. Eichen to consult on an ancient artifact that they excavated during an archaeological expedition in the Middle East. Right. I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. No problem. I understand. Welcome to the Eichen Pharmaceuticals Electronic Database. Please make a selection. Kane. Accessing information on Kane. Kane was one of the first two recipients of the in utero psionic booster serum. He was raised in foster care with his brother Abel in the Icon School for Gifted Children and showed an early aptitude for using pyrokinetic talents, which led to the creation of the fire totem. When Cain and Abel were young, a violent quarrel resulted in the accidental death of their foster mother. While Cain felt that it was Abel's initiation of psionic talents that caused this tragedy, Abel believed that it was Cain's fault for escalating the fight to the point at which excessively high-powered talents were used. Due to this disagreement, the boys continued to drift apart until the DNPC began looking for psionic recruits. Both Cain and Abel decided that they were willing to bury the hatchet and join the force together. Initially, this arrangement worked quite well. However, as time went on, Abel grew more and more enamored with his power, and Cain was eventually forced to subdue him in the field, resulting in Abel's suspension and subsequent incarceration. Cain is one of the most powerful psionic agents the DNPC has ever recruited, and has dedicated his life to ensuring the peaceful coexistence of psionics and humans in our society. Welcome to the Icon Pharmaceuticals Electronic Database. Please make a selection. 
Able. Accessing information on Abel. Abel was one of the first two recipients of the in utero cyanic booster serum. He was raised in foster care with his brother Kane in the Icon School for Gifted Children and showed an early fascination with the destructive capability of violent storms and the power of electricity, which he later manifested into the storm totem. When Kane and Abel were young, a violent quarrel resulted in the accidental death of their foster mother. While Abel believed that it was Kane's fault for escalating the fight to the point at which excessively high-powered talents were used, Kane felt that it was Abel's initiation of psionic talents that was to blame. Due to this disagreement, the boys continued to drift apart until the DNPC began looking for psionic recruits. Both Kane and Abel decided they were willing to bury the hatchet and join the force together. Initially, this arrangement worked quite well. However, Abel soon became more interested in combating psionics in the field than upholding the law, which eventually resulted in his suspension from the force and subsequent incarceration. Shortly afterward, Abel escaped from the DNPC and fell into a life of crime. Abel thinks of himself as a god. He sees himself as the next step in human evolution and has a great disdain for humanity as a whole. He is considered to be highly unstable and extremely dangerous. Welcome to the Icon Pharmaceuticals Electronic Database. Please make a selection. Priscilla Devine. Accessing information on Priscilla Devine. Priscilla Devine volunteered to take an experimental version of Dr. Icon's adult psionic booster serum in hopes of fulfilling her dream of becoming an authentic psychic and using her powers to help those in need of guidance. As the serum began to take effect, Priscilla began to show an unnatural knowledge and understanding of ancient Egypt as if she had lived there in a past life. Her fixation with Egyptian culture, coupled with a desire to help others, led to the manifestation of the Sun Totem. When Priscilla was asked to develop and use more aggressive talents, she quickly became disheartened with Icon's cause and eventually ran away. Priscilla Devine is now the head of the Psychic Link Network, a telephone psychic service she created in the desert to help guide people down the road of enlightenment. She frequently rallies and protest against Dr. Icon and Icon Pharmaceuticals, as well as anyone who supports the exploitation of psionically gifted children. Welcome to the Icon Pharmaceuticals Electronic Database. Please make a selection. Adrian Starr. Accessing information on Adrian Starr. Adrian Starr, formerly Adrian Stahler, volunteered to take an experimental version of Dr. Icon's adult psionic booster serum in hopes of realizing his boyhood dream of being able to perform genuine magic. Though the serum did grant him that ability, it also had the unfortunate side effect of making him susceptible to extreme fits of insanity. However, due to his natural discipline and overwhelming desire to learn, he was usually able to deal with this side effect and quickly became the most powerful and focused psionic in Dr. Icon's adult test group. In fact, Adrian's theatrical talents were so powerful that they eventually formed the illusion totem. As time went by, Adrian became bored with his life at the Icon research facility and one day simply vanished. Years later, he resurfaced under the name Adrian Starr and dubbed himself the world's greatest illusionist. Adrian Starr is an incredibly powerful psionic and is now one of the most popular live performers in the world. Welcome to the Icon Pharmaceuticals Electronic Database. Please make a selection. Bobby Jenkins. Accessing information on Bobby Jenkins. Bobby Jenkins, legally Robert William Jenkins, was the first successful recipient of Dr. Icon's in utero super serum. The serum granted Bobby powerful psionic abilities without any effect on his sanity whatsoever. This breakthrough paved the way for a new generation of psionic super beings that Dr. Icon calls the children of tomorrow, who all manifest their psionic abilities through the innocent and youthful truth totem. 
Bobby is extremely intelligent and is considered highly valuable to Dr. Eichen and her research staff due to his tremendous psionic potential. Welcome to the Eichen Pharmaceuticals Electronic Database. Please make a selection. Ajani Namdu. Accessing information on Ajani Namdu. Ajani Namdu, also known as the Bone Priest, volunteered to take an experimental version of Dr. Eichen's adult psionic booster serum for no other reason than the prospect of obtaining superhuman powers. Given the powerful nature of the serum, combined with the unstable state of his own psyche, Ajani's new abilities nearly resulted in his own death on several occasions. Being in such close contact to death caused Ajani to develop a kinship with the afterworld, which led him to shape his psionic abilities into what is now known as the Death Totem. As each day passed, he began to care less and less about the living world, and eventually left the test group, vowing one day to awaken the world of the dead. Ajani Namdu now calls himself the Bone Priest, and runs the largest black market operation that deals with the illegal selling of spines, brains, and other human organs. He is extremely violent and is considered to be highly dangerous to anyone who should come in contact with him. Welcome to the Icon Pharmaceuticals Electronic Database. Please make a selection. Elijah Krebspawn. Accessing information on Elijah Krebspawn. Professor Elijah Krebspawn is a gifted scholar who is well-traveled and highly respected in the field of archaeology. Along with Professor Troy, Krebspawn is best known for his discovery of an artifact somewhere in the Middle East that is credited with helping Dr. Eichen develop the psionic booster serum. When Professor Krebspawn volunteered to take one of the first versions of the serum, it granted him psionic abilities, but also had the side effect of causing his body to age at an accelerated rate. Due to his interest and vast knowledge of ancient civilizations and the occult, Professor Krebspawn manifested his psionic abilities into the dark art of the demonology totem. As time went by, the professor grew more and more aware of the potential consequences that could arise from Dr. Eichen's research, and he eventually left to pursue his own endeavors. Professor Elijah Krebspawn is a highly intelligent psionic whose whereabouts are currently unknown. Welcome to the Eichen Pharmaceuticals Electronic Database. Please make a selection. Garland Troy. Accessing information on Garland Troy. Professor Garland Troy and Professor Elijah Krebspawn were longtime friends and associates who often collaborated on work together. Along with Professor Krebspawn, Troy is best known for his discovery of an artifact somewhere in the Middle East that is credited with helping Dr. Eichen develop the psionic booster serum. When Dr. Eichen developed the very first prototype of the serum, Professor Troy eagerly volunteered to be the initial human test subject. Due to the unstable nature of this early version of the serum, Troy was granted unbelievably powerful psionic abilities, but unfortunately it came at the cost of his own sanity. For the safety of Dr. Eichen and her staff, Professor Troy was confined to a cell where he was monitored until one day he escaped. Professor Garland Troy was the very first recipient of Dr. Eichen's original psionic booster serum. He is missing and is presumed dead. Don't mind me, I'm just organizing my files. Let's see if this works. This looks like some kind of access card. Icon Pharmaceuticals Electronic Database. Please make a selection. Icon Pharmaceuticals. Accessing information on Icon Pharmaceuticals. Icon Pharmaceuticals was founded by leading genetic scientist Dr. Joan Icon. 
the company was created out of her dedication for the advancement of humanity through genetic engineering and cutting-edge medical technology. Dr. Eichen's most notable creation is a psionic booster serum. This serum, when administered to humans in utero, grants recipients the ability to generate powerful energy emissions with their minds. Icon Pharmaceuticals is currently the only corporation in the entire world that is dedicated solely to psionic research. For more information, visit the company's corporate website at www.iconpharmaceuticals.com. Welcome to the Icon Pharmaceuticals electronic database. Please make a selection. The Children of Tomorrow. Accessing information on the Children of Tomorrow. The Children of Tomorrow project represents the culmination of all Dr. Eichen's work in the field of psionic research. These children are the newest generation of psionics that have received the latest version of Dr. Eichen's psionic booster serum, called the Super Serum. The Children of Tomorrow project was developed to enhance the abilities of Dr. Eichen's hand-raised psionic youth in an attempt to evolve them to a higher, more productive level in hopes that they will someday become the leaders of our society. Welcome to the Icon Pharmaceuticals electronic database. Please make a selection. Project Double S. Accessing information on Project Double S. Project Double S is the acronym for the Super Serum and is one of the most significant and ambitious projects Dr. Eichen has ever worked on. The advancement that separates the super serum from all previous versions of the serum is that when it is administered in utero, the super serum enables humans to develop powerful psionic abilities without any effect on their sanity whatsoever. This new serum represents the pinnacle of Dr. Eichen's work with a psionic booster serum. Welcome to the Icon Pharmaceuticals electronic database. Please make a selection. Administration. Accessing information for Icon Pharmaceuticals administrators. It is recommended that an armed escort accompany all staff members who enter the Children of Tomorrow wing. The children may only be transported to designated training areas and must be supervised at all times. The access code to the Children of Tomorrow wing is yellow, blue, red, white, green. Kane here. Hey, how's it going in there? Pretty good. I found some information in some of Eichen's records that a Professor Krebspawn and a Professor Troy asked Dr. Eichen to come look at an artifact they dug up somewhere in the Middle East. Hmm. I wonder why they asked for Eichen. I don't know, but I'm going to try to find out. In the meantime, why don't you see what you can find out about either Krebspawn or Troy? All right. I'll get right on it.
Let's see if this works. Hi, how can I help you? I'd like to see Manda, please. Oh, how nice. Manda doesn't get many visitors. Would you like a security escort? Nah, that won't be necessary. Okay, just go through this door and Manda is in the first room on your right. Thanks. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this place seems oddly familiar. Hi there. Hello. What's your name? I'm Kane. Have you come to play with us? No, I'm sorry. I'm just here to look around. What are you looking for? I'm not exactly sure. Well, then how will you know when you find it? That's a good question. He's not very smart, is he? <laughs> not as smart as Bobby. <laughs> hey, would this Bobby kid be about ten years old and carry a backpack? Yes, that's Bobby. Do you know him? Yeah, Bobby's an old friend of mine. Does he play here too? Not anymore. The doctors took him away for good this time. Why did they take him away? Because he's special. Let's play a game. What kind of game? Let's play Dance the Dolly. Yeah, Dance the Dolly. Ah, oh, that sounds so cute. Okay, change the dolly. <laughs> What? Right now. I told you he's the one from our dreams. What are you talking about? What dreams? I told you before, Kane. We have foreseen that you are the one who will prevent the coming of the great darkness. Look, I'm not here to prevent any darkness. Why are you kids down here anyway? We live here just as you once did. No, I don't think so. I grew up in the Iken schools, but I've never been down here. Yes, you have, Cain. It was a very long time ago. Don't you remember? No, I don't. And how could you possibly know that? You weren't even born when I was a kid. Come, I'll show you. That doesn't prove anything. Any of you could have done that. But doesn't this place seem familiar to you? Yeah, maybe a little, but that doesn't mean I lived here. You were born here, Kane, long before the children of tomorrow. You were the very first one. The first what? The first gifted child, the only one who can save us from the coming of the great darkness. What is this darkness? All we know is that a great darkness is coming to this world. And we will all perish when it arrives. And how am I supposed to stop it? By finding Mother's artifact before your brother does. You mean Abel? Yes. You must find the artifact before he does, or else all will be lost. So where can I find this artifact? Don't worry. Mother will tell you. Great. So what now? You should visit Nathan in the room across the hall. He's a little stubborn, but he can help you. Okay, thanks. Good luck, Kane. Sorry, I can't talk. I've got to finish recording the children's test scores.
Sorry, I don't have time to chat. I'm busy studying the children's inkblot interpretations. Hey, how can you turn on those lights from there? I don't know. I've always had that talent. Hi, I'm Jessica. Can you help me? What do you want me to do? The doctors took my favorite toy and put it in the room next door. They want me to get it, but I'm afraid of the letters on the floor. You're afraid of letters? Yes. Some of them hurt you and, and I can't see which ones they are. Why would anyone make something like that? Because the doctors want us to learn the way. But they keep changing it and now I'll never get my toy back. All right, I'll get your toy back for you. Really? You do that for me? I guess so. Thanks a lot, mister. I'll open the door for you. Hey, I had one of these when I was a kid. My toy, my toy, you got it! Oh, thank you! Ah, uh, it was nothing. Yes, it was. Without you, I would have never got my toy back. Here, I want you to have something. What is it? It's a gift that will allow you to touch things from far away. You can try it on my lights if you want to. Thanks. What's the problem, kid? I've been trying to solve this stupid puzzle all day and I just can't figure it out. Well, maybe you should take a little break. Your name wouldn't happen to be Nathan, would it? Yeah, who are you? The name's Cain. Manda said you could help me. Ah, so you're the one who's gonna save all humanity, huh? Yeah, I can help you, but I have to solve this puzzle first. I can't believe you did it! You really are the one from our dreams! 
All right, I've done my part. Now, how are you going to help me out? Let me guess. You want to talk to Mother about the artifact, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, I have a friend named Jared who can help you find her. Okay, so where is this Jared? He's in jail. You're kidding. But you can still visit him. Oh, okay. But he doesn't talk to strangers. Then how is he supposed to help me? Well, you could give him his long lost pendant. Great. So now I got to go find this guy's pendant? No, he gave it to me a long time ago. Here, you can have it. Stay right here. Thanks for the help, kid. Now we're even. This is a maximum security detention wing. Nobody is allowed beyond this point without proper authorization. 
I'm Agent Kane with the Department of National Psionic Control. We're currently investigating a break-in that occurred last night, and I'm here to question a few of the inmates. Sorry, sir, but we didn't receive any orders about that. That is just typical. Why is it that the orders never get to the right people? Look, I have the chief fax over a copy of the orders first thing in the morning. In the meantime, I need to get in there and wrap this thing up. Why don't I just call my superior down here and we'll see what he thinks about all this? Okay, why don't you go ahead and call him right now and bring him all the way down here. I'm sure he'll be very happy to hear how you refuse to aid a DMPC agent in the investigation of a psionic terrorist campaign that could very well have global ramifications just because someone in your department forgot to show you the orders. You can also tell your superior that if we don't get the information we need, he'll be the one held responsible and we'll have to sit down with the chief of the DMPC and explain everything. Oh, and be sure to let him know that I already explained all of this to you, but you still felt you needed to waste everybody's time by bringing him down here anyway. Uh, on second thought, I don't think there's any need to bring my superior down here. I'm sure it'll be okay as long as we get a copy of those orders first thing in the morning. You will remember to fax that over, right? Of course. First thing. All right, agent. You can go on through. Thank you, gentlemen. You can tell your superior that you've done this nation a great service. Thank you, sir. Is this yours? Hey, my pendant. Thanks. You must be Jared then. That's right. How did you know? A boy named Nathan gave me your pendant. He said that you would be able to help me find an artifact I'm looking for. Oh, you must mean Mother's artifact. Yeah, that's the one. In order to reach Mother, you're going to have to take the elevator in the secret lab behind her office. To activate the elevator, you'll need a card key that I have. I've kept it hidden with me for months, hoping that someday I'd be able to use it. So you'll give me this card key? If you let me out of here, I'll give it to you. Alright, how do I do that? There's a box on the far wall with a switch in it that controls all the cell doors. I can open the box, but I'll need you to pull the switch. That sounds great. But how are you going to open the box from in there? You'd be surprised what you can do with a few loose wires and a lot of free time. Check this out. Nice. Thanks. I should probably warn you though, opening the cells will alert the guards and trigger a lockdown that will close all the doors. Then how are we supposed to get out of here? The wall behind my cell is thin and could easily be broken with a powerful enough blast. Unfortunately, I don't have that kind of talent, but I assume that you do. Yeah, that's a good assumption. Great. I'll give you the card key as soon as I get out. Somebody opened the cells. We gotta get in there now!
Thanks for the car key, Jared. Close.
Bingo. Who are you? Mm, Dr. Beekman sent me down to get an update on your progress. Well, I thought it was pronounced Beekerman. Shut up, Eric, and finish recording that data. Well, excuse me. Yes, Beekerman always likes to check up on us and make sure we're not screwing around down here. Well, as you know, we've been working on Project SSA. You know, the super serum that can be given to adults? Oh, yeah. So what are you guys doing with that? Well, as I'm sure you're aware, Bobby gave us living proof that the latest version of the psionic booster serum actually works and has no effect on the recipient's sanity whatsoever. Yes, that's why Dr. Iken dubbed it the super serum. Of course. So now we've been given the ambitious task of creating a version of the super serum that can be administered to adults. Yes, and ambitious is putting it lightly. So how's it coming along? Not as quickly as we'd like, but we're definitely making progress. Yeah, right. Shut up, Eric. Well, we need to get back to work. Just tell Beekerman that we'll have something to show him at the next department meeting. Sounds good. Keep up the good work. Will do. No time to talk. There's a lot of work to be done here. personal laboratory, where he hopes to confront Dr. Iken about the break-ins, about Bobby, and about the mysterious artifact that the children alluded to. Hmm, looks like I might have to defend myself around here.
This must be where they manufactured the serum. in those containers. Hey, is everything okay in there? Well, if you think being attacked by genetic mutations with psionic abilities is okay, then yeah. Wow, it sounds like she's got some strange stuff going on down there. 
You don't even want to know. Oh, that reminds me. I found the blueprints for the building, so I'll try to find an escape route for you just in case something goes wrong. Good. I better get going and keep looking for Iken. Okay, talk to you later. Those can't possibly be human brains. What is she doing down here? Dr. Eichen, it looks like you've been busy lately. Kane, why am I not surprised to see you here? You always were one of my strongest. Let's cut the small talk. I know about Bobby, I know about the Super Serum, and I know about your plans to create a version of it that can be given to adults. Oh, really? Then why are you here? I want the artifact you, Krebsbon, and Troy found on the archaeological dig. So where is it? I'm sorry to disappoint you, Kane. But I don't have it. I haven't had it for years. You're lying. The children told me you knew where it was. Professor Krebspawn took it a long time ago, and I haven't seen him or the artifact ever since. I assume he still has it. Tell me, Iken, why are you doing this? Can't you see how wrong it is? I've unlocked the full potential of the human mind. I've helped to create the nucleus of a perfect society. The world's greatest teachers, scientists, and political leaders of tomorrow are all here in this building. You should be thankful. Thankful? You've exposed the world of powers it was never meant to understand. And look what you've created. I don't see leaders. I see mutants, psychos, and criminals. Some perfect society. Your sick creations are taking over the world by force, and who's supposed to stop them? You, Kane. You and the DNPC have the power to do away with the old mistakes and pave the way for the children of tomorrow. You want us to clean up your mess? Sorry, it's over, Iken. I'm in this all right now. You need to come with me to headquarters. I don't think so. I've already alerted security and will be here any minute. In the meantime, I'd like to show you my latest invention. I call it the Brain Circuit. It allows me to harness the power and the psionic talents from a reanimated human brain. I'm standing in the main component of the Brain Circuit right now. Let me give you a little demonstration of what was in Priscilla Devine's mind.
much more powerful and have improved your control. I've had practice. Perhaps you may finally be a match for your brother Abel. You mean my foster brother? No, Cain. Your real brother. What are you talking about? Abel is your genetic brother. Don't you remember? Or have you chosen to forget? That's impossible. My foster mother told us that we were adopted. My real mother died at childbirth. Oh, it is possible, Cain. Your foster mother worked for me. You and Abel are my greatest scientific achievements. The first genetically engineered psionic beings. That's a lie. I'll kill you for what you've done. This isn't over, Iken. Yeah? Kane, what's going on? I can alert at her SWAT, so I need to get out of here fast. Okay, L let me get the blueprints in front of me. Where are you? I'm not exactly sure. I was in Iken's main office and I ran out of a small door that was directly across from the main entrance. Okay, hold on. I'm looking for it on the blueprints. Okay, but hurry up. I don't have much time. Are you in a long hallway right now? Yeah. Good. I think I've got it. If you follow the hallway you're in now, there should be a junction up ahead. Once you reach it, you're going to need to turn right. You should come to another junction, where you'll need to go straight through. Then, you should come to one last junction, where you're going to need to turn left. It looks like that path will take you out to the parking lot. Alright, I think I got it. Be careful in there, Kane. I'll call you in a few minutes to make sure you're okay. Kane here. Is that you, Frost? Yeah. Are you out of danger yet? I think so. Hey, thanks for getting me out of there. Don't mention it. There should be a car waiting for you out in the parking lot. Great. So what did you find out from Iken? Not as much as I would have liked. She said the artifact may be with Professor Krebs spawn, but she didn't know where he was. She also told me that Abel and I are genetic brothers. 
That's crazy. You don't believe it, do you? I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe. It's all a little confusing. If you don't mind, I really don't want to talk about it right now. I understand. Well, I've got good news for you. I managed to track down Professor Krebs spawn. That's great. Where is he? He changed his name to Thomas Ellard and has been teaching archaeology over at Price University for the last few years. Good. I think I'll pay him a visit. I thought you might say that. Your ride should be there any minute, so you'd better get going. All right. Talk to you later. Having escaped from Dr. Eichen's laboratory with the knowledge that a Professor Krebspawn might have the artifact, Kane is now en route to Price University, where he hopes to speak with the Professor face to face. Red Spawn had better have more answers than I can did. This is Kane. Hi, it's Frost. I've got a little more information for you on Professor Krebspawn. He began working at the university about 15 years ago under the name of Thomas Ellard. Over the years, he made several significant archaeological finds that gave the university a lot of notoriety. Due to his success, he was later promoted to head of the archaeology department. I'm happy for him. So is this his personal residence or his office? Both. He received a grant from the government to further his research on ancient pagan civilizations, so the university is allowing him to live and work in the old dean's house. Is he here alone? I don't know. He probably has at least a few servants or assistants. All right. I'm going to go see what I can find. Okay. I'm also picking up very large psionic readings from the building. It could be the artifact you're looking for, or some other psionic activity. Either way, be sure to watch your step. Thanks for the tip. Oh, and remember, they know him as Professor Ellard. They probably never heard of the name Krebspawn. Got it. Yes? Hi, I'd like to speak to Professor Ellard. Is he in? I'm sorry, sir, but the professor isn't seeing visitors at this hour. You'll have to come back tomorrow. Yes? I'm sure Professor Eller will see me. It's extremely important. As I stated earlier, the professor isn't seeing anyone tonight. I'm sorry, sir, but you'll have to come back tomorrow. What now? Tell the professor that I'm here to talk about Elijah Krebsbond. One moment, please. Please come in. Please wait here in the foyer, and the professor will be out shortly. Thanks. This guy definitely has issues with organized religion. Hmm, 
I sure hope this isn't one of Crab Spawn's relatives. Good evening. I am Professor Ellard, and you are? Agent Kane with the Department of National Sign and Control. And what brings you here tonight, Agent Kane? I'm looking for something that I believe you might have. All right, I have a few minutes. Let's take a walk, and you can tell me exactly what it is you're looking for. Okay, lead the way. So tell me, Agent, how did you come upon the name Krebspawn? I paid a visit to Eichen Pharmaceuticals today, and I learned a few things about you. Interesting. So tell me, when you were at Eichen Pharmaceutical, did you speak with Dr. Eichen herself? As a matter of fact, I did. Hmm, very interesting indeed. So, did Dr. Eichen happen to mention anything to you about your childhood? Look, Eichen already hit me with that nonsense. And you know what? I refuse to believe that Abel and I are nothing more than scientific creations born from her twisted mind. This is a sick game you two are playing, and I'm done with it. My, such hostility. I'm sure you'll be ready to accept the truth soon enough. All right, how about we spend less time talking about me and more time talking about you? Of course. This way. As you may or may not know, Dr. Eichen and I go back about 30 years. I, like everyone else, admired her groundbreaking studies on the human brain and hope to someday be able to work with her in some capacity. And that's when you discovered the artifact. Ah, I see you've been doing your homework, Agent Kane. Artifact, as you call it, was unearthed during an archaeological dig in the Middle East and was the single greatest find in the history of this world. If this artifact is so great, then how come I've never heard of it? <laughs> Agent K, finds like this aren't exactly broadcast on the nightly news. Okay, so what exactly is this artifact? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Uh. 
What I will tell you is that we were extremely perplexed by what we found on the dig, and we knew instantly that it was no ordinary find. In fact, the artifact was such an enigma to us that there was simply no way we could continue our research without assistance. Who is we? Myself and Professor Garland Troy. We attended university together and often collaborated on archaeological research. Professor Troy and I were the only two present when the artifact was found. So where is Professor Troy now? Unfortunately, he's gone. So how does Dr. Eichen fit in all of this? Well, when Professor Troy and I found the artifact, we unanimously concluded that there was only one person in the entire world who could help us with it, and that was Dr. Joan Eichen. Wait a minute. Dr. Eichen is an expert on genetics in the human brain. How could she possibly help with an artifact that was unearthed in the middle of the desert? Like I said before, this was no ordinary find. Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt, Professor, but you have an important phone call in the study. Uh, just tell them I'll call them back later. Sir, it's the dean, and he said he needs to speak with you immediately. Kane, I apologize, but I must take this call. If you don't mind waiting in here for a few minutes, I'll be back shortly. Take your time. Kane here. Hey, Kane. Have you talked with Professor Krebspawn yet? Yeah, I was in the middle of a conversation with him when he got a phone call and he had to leave for a few minutes. So does he have the artifact? He might. I'm still in the process of finding out. Okay, just be careful in there. Please. The guy's an old geezer. I'll talk to you later. I'm terribly sorry to keep you waiting, Agent Kane. If you follow me, we can continue our talk. Thank you. 
So where are we going? Uh, to get a breath of fresh air while we enjoy the exterior of this magnificent house. This way, please. Now, where were we? I was asking why you needed a genetic scientist to help you with your research on an artifact that was found on an archaeological dig. Ah, yes, of course. Well, for years, Dr. Eichen had been doing research on tapping the unused portion of the human brain with little to no success. Once we examined the artifact, we knew that it would finally provide Dr. Eichen with the answers she needed to unlock the full potential of the human mind. So what was it? A tablet? A scroll? A book? A drawing? All of those things and more. The artifact instantly became the cornerstone for all of Dr. Eichen's research and enabled her to produce what would have otherwise taken her decades to discover. So why didn't you continue to work with Dr. Eichen? Like most brilliant scientists, Dr. Eichen became intoxicated with her newfound success. Between the government funding and the instant celebrity status, Dr. Eichen slowly began to lose her perspective. She buried herself in her work and started caring less and less about the consequences that would result from the awakening of the sleeping human mind. I see. When Dr. Aiken would no longer listen to reason, I was forced to take matters into my own hands. I had hoped that by leaving and taking the artifact with me, her research would come to a halt. But unfortunately, it only slowed her down. Do you still have the artifact? Yes, it's still in my possession. May I see the artifact? I'm sorry, but that won't be possible. The artifact doesn't concern you, Agent K. Oh, I think it does concern me. Really? Isn't this a lovely view? Yeah, just great. Look. The children of tomorrow told me that if my brother were to get a hold of that artifact, the effects would be devastating. Agent Kane, are you listening to yourself? How can you allow your actions to be governed by a group of kids? The children of tomorrow are an ungodly experiment that was spawned from Dr. Eichen's warped mind. I'm just following my gut here. And my gut tells me that I need to see the artifact. Don't worry about the artifact, Agent Kane. I assure you that it's very safe in my care. Look, old man, if you don't show me that artifact right now, I'm going to tear this place apart until I find it. And after that, I'm going to have you cited for refusing to aid a DMPC officer, and you can be damn sure that you're never going to work at a university again. <laughs> you ignorant fool. You're as insane as your psychotic brother if you think I'd actually allow either of you to get a hold of the artifact. There's a part of this house you haven't seen yet that I'm sure you'll find most interesting. In fact, if you don't mind, I'd like to show it to you right now. It was nice meeting you, Agent Kane. After a lengthy tour of Professor Krebspawn's home, Kane was lured out onto the terrace, where he was dropped through a trap door leading to the underground catacombs below. Ah! Uh -oh! What is this place? Uh, K? 
Kane here. So what's up? Did Professor Krebspawn have anything interesting to say? Well, he told me he had the artifact, but he wasn't exactly thrilled with the idea of me seeing it. I was just about to put the smack down on him when our conversation got cut a little short. Cut short how? And what's that noise in the background? Well, it seems Krebspawn has some kind of dungeon beneath his house and, uh, well, I kind of fell into it. You what? How was I supposed to know that Crestbomb was going to drop me down here through a trap door? <sighs> he dropped you down a... Didn't I tell you to be careful? Frost, this is not the time for I told you so. Now I need to find a way out of here. Well, can't you just climb back up? Can I just... What the... Do you really think I would have said that I need to find a way out of here if I could have just climbed back up? Jeez, calm down. It's not my fault you fell into a dungeon. Sorry. I just can't believe I let that old man do this to me. All right, try not to beat yourself up over it. Well, unfortunately, there's not much I can do from here, so it looks like you're going to have to find a way out of there yourself. Okay, talk to you later. Thank heavens, you're human. Yeah, last time I checked. You've got to help get me out. I've been stuck down here for days. Who are you, and why are you here? I'm one of Professor Ellard's assistants. I was wandering around the house one evening, and I stepped onto a strange device I had never seen before. There was a flash of light, and the next thing I knew, I was in a room that had... Weird symbols carved into the floor tiles. Before I even had time to think, the professor came out of nowhere and told me that I would pay dearly for disturbing the sacred resting place or something like that. And then everything went black and I woke up here in this godforsaken place. What was that room? I have no idea, but it must have been something special. If we're both down here for the same reason, then I'll bet I have a hunch what's in that room. So, can you help me get out of here? I'll try. What do you want me to do? I think those levers on the wall over there might open the gates. All right. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. I knew someone would come to help me. Thank you so much for getting me out of there. How can I ever repay you? You could tell me how to get out of this place. Believe me, if I knew how to get out of here, I'd tell you. Unfortunately, I'm as lost as you are. Well, I'm gonna keep trying to find a way out. You mind if I tag along? Actually, I think it might be a good idea to split up. That way we'll have a better chance of finding a way out. If you say so. Give me a holler if you find anything. Okay.
Hmm. This is a strange looking stone. I guess I'll hang on to it. I wonder if this goes here. Another stone. I think I know where this goes. another stone in place.
Another stone. I think I know where this goes.
That's another stone in place. things going down there? Not bad. I'm still trying to find a way out. Well, I did a little more research on our friend, Professor Krebspawn, and it looks like in addition to his archaeological studies, he also dabbles in demonology. Oh, I'd say he does a little more than just dabble in it. He's got all kinds of demons running around down here. Really? There are actual demons down there? Yeah, don't worry. I got it under control. And if all goes well, I should be out of here soon. Okay, just be careful down there.
Another stone. I think I know where this goes.
Hmm, looks like I need some kind of key to operate this. the stone in place. Hey, over here! I think I found something in the wall! Yeah, it looks like some kind of key or something. Look out! Huh? Ah! Ah! What is this? I, I can't move! Help! Hey! That's right, I'm talking to you. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Stone. around this time and you'll experience them firsthand. <laughs> Choose your words wisely, King. For one day I may grant your request and show you powers you couldn't even begin to comprehend. Somehow I doubt that. We shall see. Thank <laughs> you. 
hope this gets me out of here. Yeah? Hey, what just happened? I just got psionic readings that were off the charts. Our old friend Gogotham paid me another visit. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, but he seems to be getting more serious. This time he summoned some of Iken's robots to go along with the rest of the menagerie. Iken's robots? How can he be doing that? I don't know, but I can't help thinking it's somehow all related. Bobby, Abel, Iken, and this Gogotham guy. Well, I haven't had any luck finding out who he is yet, but I'll keep trying. You should just try to get out of there in one piece. I'll do that. Having successfully escaped the hellish catacombs, Kane must now search the estate in order to find Professor Krebspawn and the artifact. This is Kane. So what's the status? Well, I finally found my way out of that dungeon. Great. So I take it you're off to find the professor? Mm-hmm. You know what time it is, right? No, I'm not wearing my watch. It's payback time. Okay, just remember not to take the old man for granted. Don't worry, I'm not even gonna give him a chance. This must be the room the guy in the dungeon told me about.
thank God. I was beginning to think I'd never see the light of day again. Look, just because I was buried in the desert for a few million years doesn't mean that I don't get lonely every once in a while. I mean, come on. Everyone needs a good stimulating conversation occasionally. What in the hell are you supposed to be? What am I supposed to be? What are you supposed to be? Wait a minute. You're the artifact, aren't you? Artifact is such an ugly word. It implies that I'm some kind of crusty old inanimate object that belongs on display in a museum where people could gawk and say things like, Oh, look, there's the artifact. Isn't it an old-looking artifact? I wonder where they dug up that artifact. God, I hate that word. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. Yes, 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 that's all fine. So you're the hero, eh? Well, I suppose I could do worse. Now here's the part in the story where you grab me and make a break for it before old crab spawn comes back and gives you a good thrashing and then lowers me back into that contestable hole. I am claustrophobic, you know. How can you be alive? I mean, you're just a head in a jar. No, oh, please, don't injure yourself trying to understand that one. Look, there are just some things in this great big universe that you'll never be able to comprehend. Like, why are there no erasers on miniature golf pencils? So let me get this straight. You're the art of... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you were found in the desert by Iken, Kretzbahn, and Troy? Good God, you're slow. Yes, I'm the one they found in the desert. Yes, I helped Dr. Iken unlock the secrets of the human mind. And yes, I'm the cause of all of this. Now, if you don't mind, could we please get going? All right, all right. You don't have to bite my head off. Oh, that's very clever. No, I don't think I've ever heard that one before. Bite my head off. Oh, how terribly funny that was. Have you ever thought about getting a career in stand-up comedy? I'm sure you'd make a... What? What are you looking at? I must admit, I'm rather surprised you made it out of my catacombs alive. You'll find I'm full of surprises. Full of surprises? God, what a razor-sharp wit you have there. I certainly hope your combat skills are stronger than your ability to communicate. Shut up. I'm getting ready to work this old fool. Yes, please do shut up. Shut up? Shut up? How dare you address a superior being in such a manner? Need I remind you again of the power that I possess? Need I remind you again of how dark and lonely it is down in that hole? Oh, yes. Good point. Carry on. I owe you some payback for dropping me in that dungeon back there, old man. But if you hand over the artifact, I'll let you slide. Ah, oh, there's that infernal word again! Hmm. How about we settle this dispute with a little test? If you pass, you can take the head and leave. What kind of test are we talking about here? Just a small test of your wits. Oh, God. Well, so much for the big rescue. All right, you're on. What are the rules? They're quite simple. You're standing on a series of floor tiles. You will notice that some of them are lit. Striking a floor tile with a psionic talent will change its state as well as the state of the floor tiles that are adjacent to it. Your goal is to light all of the floor tiles. That sounds easy enough. So when do I start? Now. Congratulations, Agent Kane. I have obviously underestimated your intelligence. Not me. I knew he could do it all along. Okay, Krebs Vaughn, I passed your test. Now I'm going to take the head and get out of here. I'm sorry, but I can't allow that. What do you mean? We had a deal. Do you really want to set into motion a series of events that could possibly destroy the world? I can't allow the head to fall into the hands of Golgotham. Wait a minute. You know Golgotham? Yes. He's what an old friend of mine has become. I don't quite follow you. You remember Professor Troy, correct? Yeah. He was with you when you found the head. Well, Professor Troy is Golgotham. What? I thought you told me Professor Troy was dead. And in a sense, he is. 
When Dr. Eichen developed the first version of the psionic booster serum, she needed a human test subject. Excited by the prospect of unlocking the full potential of his mind, Professor Troy leapt at the chance to be the world's very first psionic being. After taking the serum, Troy immediately developed an incredibly high psionic aptitude. Unfortunately, this newfound power came at the cost of his own sanity. As the days went by, Troy slipped deeper and deeper into the inevitable dementia that was brought on by taking the unstable psionic booster serum. Given Troy's extremely unstable nature and massive power, we had no choice but to confine him. Once he was isolated, Troy began referring to himself as Golgotham. With the help of a few members from the test group, he managed to escape and hasn't been seen or heard from since. So what would happen if he got the head? The head possesses an unimaginable amount of knowledge, knowledge that can be harnessed into immense power, just as it was with Dr. Eichen and her quest to unlock the human mind. If Golgotham somehow manages to obtain the head, he will use its power to destroy all of humanity. So that was the real reason you left Dr. Eichen, wasn't it? That's right. I had to prevent the head from falling into the wrong hands, so I took it from Dr. Eichen and dedicated the rest of my life to its protection. And you've done a great job, but I'll take it from here. Sorry, Agent Kane, but I cannot allow you, your psychopathic brother, or anyone else for that matter, to take the head. In fact, with what you know, I cannot even allow you to live. We'll just see about that.
Finally! Good God, could that have taken any longer? Oh, and I suppose you could have done better? Actually, yes. If I had arms, legs, and maybe a body. Mm-hmm. So why was Krebsfond so determined on keeping you away from Gold Gotham? Well, that's a silly question, because he's afraid that Gold Gotham would use me to summon the Sanity Devourer. The what? The Sanity Devourer. Look, I'm sure you must know by now there are many beings in existence that are much more powerful than humans, I being one of them. So? So, one of these powerful beings is the Sanity Devourer. Actually, it's called something completely different. But since humans can't pronounce it, we'll just call it the Sanity Devourer, since that's basically what it does. It devours sanity? Yes. It feeds on the minds of entire races of sentient beings who possess psionic abilities, thus devouring their sanity. It feeds on entire races? How big is this thing? Well, it travels across galaxies and dimensions and could totally consume the minds of every human on this planet in an instant. Damn, that's big. And you've actually seen this thing? Of course I have. It sent me here. To do what? To provide your race with the knowledge necessary for you to tap into the unused portion of your minds and give you psionic abilities. As soon as enough of your race has these abilities, it's my job to notify the Sanity Devourer that you are ready for consumption. That can't possibly be true. Yes, I know it's extremely difficult to accept, but I assure you it is entirely true. But to be perfectly honest, I'm not really looking forward to the prospect of getting cast off to yet another remote corner of the universe, possibly waiting thousands of years without anyone to talk to, just to repeat the process all over again. That's comforting. So are you the only one that can summon this thing? Currently, I am the only being on the planet who can summon the Sanity Devourer, yes. Currently? What do you mean, currently? Well, if Golgotham gets a hold of me, then he might be able to summon it as well. Why would Golgotham summon the Sanity Devourer if it would destroy humanity? Because whoever summons the Sanity Devourer is given virtually infinite knowledge and then is sent out somewhere in the universe to prepare another race for consumption. And it appears that Golgotham wants to take my place. Man, that is messed up. So what you're telling me is humans are nothing more than fruit for this Sanity Devourer to eat as soon as we're ripe? Yes, that's exactly right. And what a fine analogy that was. What if I just destroyed you right now? First of all, I'm not completely convinced that you could do so. And secondly, if you did somehow manage to destroy me, it would signal the Sanity Devourer to come, thinking that your race was ready for consumption. So what do you want me to do? Well, you could begin by getting me out of this dismal house. And then you'll want to make absolutely sure that Gold Gotham doesn't get a hold of me. All right, I can do that. This is Kane. Hey, Kane. It's been a while. Have you spoken with Professor Krebspawn yet? Oh, I spoke with him all right. You didn't. Look, the man tried to kill me and I had to defend myself. Why did he try to kill you? Because I told him I wanted the artifact. Will you please stop calling me that? What? Who was that? Uh, nobody important. Nobody important? How dare you? Will you be quiet? I'm on the phone. Sorry about that. Go ahead. So did you get it? Get what? The artifact. Oh, yeah. I have it with me. So what is it? Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. You really have to see it for yourself. Okay, I guess I'll take your word for it. Do you need a ride back to headquarters? Yeah, that'll be great. And in the meantime, I need you to find out everything you can about a Professor Garland Troy. I'll explain later. You got it. Wait a minute. What? Why are you stopping? Hang on. What? Ah, uh, nothing. I just thought I heard something. You thought you heard something? Look, you do realize that if we continue to stop every time you think you hear something, we're most certainly going to get caught. Well, uh... Splendid! Now let's get going. Hey, who's out there? Hello, Agent Kane. 
I believe you have something that belongs to me. Oh, is that so? And who are you supposed to be? You don't know who he is? This man here is the Bone Priest. Yeah, the Bone Priest. You see? Now look what your stopping and listening has gotten us into. Ah, so that must be the artifact Golgotham wants. Look, I am a superior being and not to be referred to as an artifact. Oh, God help you if I hear the word artifact again. Help! Bobby? Kane, help! He wants to take me to Golgotham. You have to save me. Don't worry, kid. You just let me handle this. Listen, if you harm one hair on that boy's head... Oh, I'm not gonna hurt him. I'm just gonna deliver him to Golgotham, along with that head you got there. Well, unfortunately, I got some bad news for you. And what would that be? You're gonna have to find something else to fetch for Golgotham, because the head is staying with me. Oh, really? Well, then I have some bad news for you. Yeah? What's that? Look behind you. Huh? Well, I can't say I didn't see that one coming. So what do we do now, boss? Yeah, what do we do now? We take the boy on the head to Golgotham and collect our money. What about Agent Kane? Yeah, what about Kane? I don't care. Take his things and get rid of him. Not long after defeating Krebspawn and obtaining the head, Kane was jumped by the Bone Priest and his men. In addition to taking the head, they also stole his gun, his badge, his cell phone, and then dumped him in an alley downtown. Aw, oh, man, my head hurts. Where the heck am I? Hey, where's all my stuff? Oh, no, the head, it's gone. Those guys who jumped me must have taken everything. Man, when I find that voodoo punk, I'm gonna teach him to respect the law. What's all that noise? Judgment Day is upon us, friend! What's going on around here? There are zombies all over the city. There's just too many of them. Where did they come from? We're not sure, but we think a Johnny Namdu, the Bone Priest, may be behind it. Really? I've got a bone to pick with that guy myself. Well, he does head up the black market organization that illegally sells spines, brains, and other human organs. So you better be careful. Why don't you just let me worry about that? 
So what happened to you? We were on our way to a rendezvous point across town when we got jumped by a group of zombies. I got hurt pretty bad. Let me tell you, it took everything I had just to get out of there. They came after me, but for some reason when I got near this church, they turned around and left me alone. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, I am in a lot of pain. You could get my first aid kit for me. Where is it? I had it with me when I escaped, but I must have dropped it. It can't be too far from here. Okay, just hang tight and I'll see if I can find it. Fellas, I think it's a little late for first day. Take that. Hey, you found my first aid kit. Thanks. I felt like I was going to pass out. No problem. Well, you're probably pretty safe here at the church, so I'm going to get going. Wait a minute. If you're going across town, you'll need this. It'll get you through the gate at the top of the stairs. Thanks. We're all gonna die! This should work. The city is full of flesh eating freaks!
they're gonna kill me. Who's gonna kill you? The Walking Dead. You gotta save me, man. Calm down. I'll protect you. Thank you, man. I owe you my life. That's right, you do. So do you know where all these zombies are coming from? They come from the Bone Priest. He has an enchanted skull that allows him to raise the dead. Whoa, did you just say an enchanted skull? Yeah, man. Why? Uh, you wouldn't happen to know where he got that from, would you? Of course, man. He got someone to steal it from its holy resting place. Now no one can stop him from taking over the city. Damn it. What? Uh, nothing. I had no idea you were so powerful. Here, take this. Looks like I need some kind of key to operate this. Take it easy, I'm DMPC. Sure you are. Can I see some identification? You're never gonna believe this, but my badge was stolen. You're right, I don't believe it. Now get out of here before you get yourself killed. Look, you don't understand. My name is Kane. I'm a psionic agent with the DMPC. Is that so? Well then I'm sure you know who the chief of the DNPC is. Chief Royce. Well, that was an easy one. You probably heard his name on the news. Believe me, I know Chief Royce. Middle-aged, a little thin in the hair department, can stand to lose a few pounds, always wears the same old brown suit. Yeah, that's the Chief, all right. I guess you do know him. So who stole your badge? The Bone Priest and his thugs jumped me while I was conducting an investigation. They took my badge, my gun, my cell phone, and dumped me in an alley on the other side of town. Wow. Sounds like you've had a rough time. 
Yeah, but it's nothing compared to the rough time this bone priest is going to have as soon as I find him. Hey, I'll bet Sergeant Hastings could help you find him. Oh, yeah. You should go talk to him. He's at the rendezvous point on the other side of the freeway. Great. I'll do that. Wait. You'll need this. It'll operate the elevator to the sky bridge. Thanks, guys. Be careful out there, Agent. Good luck, Agent. The city is full of flesh-eating freaks! Here goes. Oh, I can't bear the stench around here. You look lost, man. Nah, I'm just looking for someone. I know lots of people. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for the man known as the Bone Priest. Any idea where I might find him? Ha ha ha! You hear that? This man say he's looking for the Bone Priest. Yeah, the Bone Priest. Did I say something funny? It's just that people don't normally look for the Bone Priest. They run from him. Well, he took some of my stuff and I want it back. Ha ha ha! This man wants the Bone Priest to give his stuff back. Yeah, he wants his stuff back. Sorry, man, but the Bone Priest don't give nothing back. Whatever he took of yours belongs to him now. Yeah, it's his stuff now. Look, I don't have time for this. Are you going to tell me where I can find the Bone Priest or am I going to have to get physical? Ha ha ha, he gonna get physical. I say we kill him. Yeah, let's kill him. You! Uh. Uh. You! Uh.
Cut the crap, Troy. I know who you are. That mortal name means nothing to me. Look, I know you're after the head, and I'm gonna make sure you never get it. Those are strong words coming from a man who doesn't even have it. That's about to change. Somehow, I doubt that. Perhaps you need a little reminder as to what you're up against. Hold it, that's far enough. Can we help you? Yeah, I'm Agent Kane. I'm looking for Sergeant Hastings. I've never heard of an Agent Kane. Neither have I. Do you have your identification? No, I don't. Then I'm going to have to ask you to step away from the barricade, sir. What's going on here? This man is claiming to be an agent by the name of Kane, but he doesn't have any ID. It's okay. I know Agent Kane. You can let him through. Yes, sir. This way, Agent. Hey, Kane. Judging by the outfit, I'd take it you're undercover. Yeah, you could say that. So what are you doing out here? It's a long story. In short, I'm looking for the man they call the Bone Priest. I thought that was Strasburg's assignment. Strasburg's looking for him, too? Yeah, we have reason to believe that the Bone Priest is behind all this chaos tonight. So Strasburg left here with a squad of men a little while ago to find him. Do you know where they went? They're on their way through the waterfront to the docks, where we think the Bone Priest is using one of the barges as his base of operations. Strasburg was assigned to infiltrate the barge and apprehend the Bone Priest. Well, I've got some business with the Bone Priest, too, so I think I'm going to help Strasburg out. Which way is it to the docks? Right through here. But be careful. There's a lot of activity over there. Thanks, Sergeant. Brave man if you're headed through the waterfront by yourself. After learning that the Bone Priest's barge might be located on the other side of the waterfront, Kane must now make his way across the park in hopes of reacquiring the head and hopefully his personal effects. for trouble. No, but it always seems to find me.
The army of the dead. The name's Kane. And am I missing something? Cause I don't see an army around here. Maybe you should look again, Hey, is that my... That is my cell phone. It's locked. Yeah. This is Agent Kane with the DMPC. I think you've got my cell phone in there. Well, then I guess it's my cell phone now, huh? What do you mean it's your cell phone? Hello? Hello? Oh, I cannot believe he just cut me off. Don't you know it's rude to cut people off in the middle of a sentence? Oh, I'm sorry about that. My hand must have slipped. That's all right. I was just going to ask you. Hello? Hello? Oh, boy. What? Look here. If you don't give me my cell phone right now, I'm going to bust down this door and wring your scrawny little neck. I wouldn't have to threaten you if you would just give me my cell phone. Hello? Damn it! Damn.
my top. Yes, yeah, set up. Why don't you guys just leave that man alone? And just who do you think you are? Yeah, who are you? Just a concerned citizen. Well, this is none of your business, man. Yeah, it's none of your business, man. If you don't step away from that man, I'm gonna go ahead and make it my business. Oh, we'll see about that. Let's kill this guy. Yeah, let's kill him. Thanks, Matt. You saved my life. Don't mention it. Now get out of here before you get killed. Okay. Did you come all the way back here just to see if I was okay? Wow, that was really nice. Here, take this. Check it out! There's a key in there! Man, I hate it when people drop things down there! Why? Because any foreign object that gets into the system can cause it to malfunction, and I'm the one who has to deal with it. That's too bad. Yeah, what's even worse is that the valve station is closed, the park is full of zombies, my girlfriend left me this morning, and I'm not even supposed to be here today! Oh, I don't even want to hear about it. Well, let me tell you about my day. It started off with a week tour of a laboratory where I was attacked by suicidal robots, disgusting mutants, and a crazy scientist who told me that she had genetically engineered my brother and I. Damn, that's... Uh... I'm not finished. Then I got thrown into a dungeon by a senile college professor where I had to fight a whole lot of demons. And I'm not talking about the personal kind. These were real demons. Real demons? Then I found a talking head in a jar who told me that all humanity would be destroyed if I lost him, which I did, along with my badge, my gun, and my cell phone. Wow, that sounds like... And as if that weren't enough, I found out that it's my fault that zombies are terrorizing the city tonight. So forgive me if I'm not too sympathetic about your damn key. Geez, sorry, man. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. I just got a little carried away there. Is there anything I could do to help? Well, you could go over to the valve station and flush this key out, but unfortunately the station is closed. 
And even if it was open, you'd still need the access code to the valves. Hmm. I still might be able to help. So why don't you go ahead and give me that code? I don't know, man. Come on. I might be able to get the key out and you could go home. Well, you got a point there. Okay, the access code to the valves is 1522. But unless you can walk on water, I don't think it's going to do you any good. Well, you never know. Sorry, sir. I can't let you through here. It's okay. I'm DMPC. Oh, all right. May I see some identification? Come on, man. Is that really necessary? Sorry, sir, but I have my orders. Look, I got mugged earlier and they took my badge, my gun, even my cell phone. Can't you cut me some slack here? I'm sorry, sir, but I can't let you through here without some form of identification. I wonder what this key is for.
think it's about time to pay my rude friend here a little visit. Hi there. Remember me? What? Uh, yeah, of course I remember you. I, uh, was just getting your phone cleaned up. Because wasn't it you who said earlier that this was your phone? And I'm sure that you didn't get to where you are today by not having it. <laughs> That's right. And what about cutting people off in the middle of a sentence? You know what? I was planning to comment on that because after thinking it over, I came to the realization that I was completely out of line and that I need to show not only you but anyone who I'm talking to a little more respect. Thank you, by the way, for pointing that out. All right, I'll just take my phone and be on my way. Thank you, sir. You have a great night. Thank you, sir. You have a great night. I wonder if anyone call. Welcome to the DMPC voice messaging system. You have eight new phone messages. Message one from Kiki Frost. This is Frost. Where are you, Kane? Give me a call. Message two from Kiki Frost. Kane. A Johnny Namdu the Bone Priest just hijacked an armored vehicle that we were using to transport Bobby to a high security military base. Everyone but the boy was killed, and we're still trying to find out if he escaped or was kidnapped. Where the hell are you? Message three from... Quickie dry cleaning. Mr. Kane, your turtleneck sweaters are ready to be picked up. Thank you. Message four from... Chief Royce. Kane, I know you're busy out in the field, but you really need to get in touch with Agent Frost. We're all beginning to get a bit concerned here. Message five from... Kiki Frost. All right, I'm getting worried now. Call me. Message six from Kiki Frost. Kane, it's Frost. There was another break-in at Eichen Pharmaceuticals, and something Dr. Eichen called the brain circuit was stolen. We think that the bone priest was behind this as well as the armored car incident. Message seven from... Bob Harding. Agent Kane, this is Bob Harding, the announcer from the Trivia Insanity Game Show. Listen, the network execs over at Fox said that the show's ratings went through the roof yesterday while you were on. So Dale and I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to be a regular guest on the show. This could be your best chance to break into show business, so go ahead and take some time to think about it. We'll be in touch. Message 8 from Kiki Frost. Kane, I don't know what's going on, but the Bone Priest and his men are terrorizing the waterfront. I know this sounds weird, but we're even getting reports of zombies in the area. I'm still picking up your signal, so I know you're alive. Please call me as soon as you get this. It's a good thing I have voicemail. Kane here. Kane, what's going on? And where the heck have you been? I've been trying to reach you all night. I got jumped by the bone priest and his men when I came out of Krebsbond's house. The next thing I know, I woke up in the alley with all of my stuff missing, including the artifact. I just now found my phone. Oh my god, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little irritated. That's all right. Did you listen to your voicemail? Yep. Great. Well, we still haven't been able to find Bobby, but we think the Bone Priest may have kidnapped him when he hit the armored vehicle. I can confirm that. Just before the Bone Priest and his men jumped me, I saw they had Bobby with them. I knew it. What do you think he wants with Bobby? Hmm. Didn't you also leave me a message saying that he stole Dr. Eichen's brain circuit? Yeah, I did. But what does that have to do with Bobby? I've got a hunch that the Bone Priest stole Bobby, the brain circuit, and the artifact to give to Golgotham. Golgotham? What would make you think that? Well, Dr. Eichen gave me a thorough demonstration of the brain circuit. It allowed her to channel the psionic energy from a reanimated human brain. Holy cow! I didn't even realize that was possible. So do you think that Golgotham wants to put Bobby in the brain circuit? Not quite. I think that he wants to put Bobby's brain in it. Ooh. And if Bobby is as powerful as they say he is... Then Golgotham will be unstoppable. Then you had better get your stuff together and find the Bone Priest before it's too late. That's exactly what I'm doing.
I'm sorry, sir, but I can't let you through here without some form of identification. Well, I found my cell phone. Will that work? I don't know. Normally, I need to see a badge. Come on, man. It's been a long night. Can't you give a fellow officer a break? Well, all right, but just this once. Thanks. You're the man. You know what? You might want to ease back a little bit on the drama there. You will pay for such an insult. anymore. Help! We're cornered! That was intense. Are you one of our psionic agents? Yeah, I'm Agent Kane. Kane, huh? Hey, didn't a bunch of civilians get killed because of you? It wasn't my fault. If I remember right, they gave you a pretty long suspension for that. I was just doing my job. And it happened around here, too, didn't it? Look, I'm trying to put all that behind me, okay? Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Here, maybe this will help.
Thanks again for your help. Kane. Hello again, Agent Kane. It's been a while since we last spoke. Yeah, I guess it has. What do you want? I know you're busy, so I won't waste your time. I'm sure you must know by now that Dr. Eichen's brain circuit and a boy named Bobby are missing. Yeah, so what's your point? My point is that both the boy and the brain circuit are extremely valuable to us, and it's imperative that we get them back. Undamaged. Well, I'm definitely going to get them, but I'm not just going to hand them over to you. Now, now, we're both on the same team here, Agent Kane. I never asked you to give anything to me. I'll just take comfort in knowing that you will safely retrieve the boy and the brain circuit for us. I'll be in touch. I have a bad feeling about this. Still set on trying to stop me, are you? I'm not trying to stop you. I'm going to stop you. I only wish you could see how hopeless it is to oppose me. Why don't you just cut the chit chat and face me, man, to whatever the hell you are? That time will come soon enough. This is Kane. Hey, it's Frost. Let me guess. Golgotham stopped by again, didn't he? Yeah, and this time he threw some zombies into the mix. Really? Zombies? How thoughtful of him. Tell me about it. So did you ever find out anything on Professor Troy? Oh, thanks for reminding me. I did some research and found out that he and Professor Krebsbond go way back. Evidently, they attended university together and collaborated on many archaeological digs throughout their careers. Then after working with Dr. Eichen, presumably on the artifact you're after, Troy just seems to have vanished off the face of the Earth. Not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? I mean Professor Troy became Golgotham. What? How? Apparently he took some of the very first batch of Eichen's psionic booster serum. It gave him psionic ability but caused him to go completely insane. Then for some reason he started calling himself Golgotham, and shortly after that he escaped. That explains his mysterious disappearance. Yep. Well, from what you've told me so far, Golgotham's power seems to be increasing as time goes by. I'd hate to see what would happen if he got a hold of Bobby, the brain circuit, or that artifact. Me too. That's why I'm on my way to find a bone priest right now to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay. Good luck.
fine. I'll never take this thing for granted again. See this? This is a DMPC badge. And if you look closely, you'll notice that it's mine. Now, do you suppose you could let me through here? Sure thing, Agent. Hold it right there! This is a secure checkpoint and nobody gets by without authorization. I'm a DMPC agent and I need you to let me through. Oh, okay. Go ahead. What? Don't you want to see my identification? No, that's all right. You sure? Yeah, we believe you. That figures. Go on through, agent. Strasburg! Kane? Kane, what are you doing out here? It's a long story. I'll tell you about it back at headquarters. Okay, sure thing. By the way, those are some nice threads. Mm-hmm. So I hear you're looking for the Bone Priest. That's right. His barge is docked on the other side of the bridge up ahead. We were just about ready to go. You want in on some of the action? That sounds great. I got a little business to settle with him myself. Good. We can definitely use your help. All right. So what's the plan? I'm going to lead the squad across the bridge to the dock. Once we're there, we'll board the barge and apprehend the Bone Priest. Sounds good to me. Great. All right, men. Let's move out. I thought this might happen. Kane, could you lower the bridge for us? I suppose so. Great, I knew I could count on you. Alright, what do I need to do? There's a mechanism over by the dam that lowers this bridge, but you'll need the access card I have to operate it. Got it. Once you lower the bridge, use your levitate talent and meet us on the other side. Sounds good. Thanks. Oh, and Kane. Yeah? It's good to be back in the field with you again. Same here.
Let's lower that bridge. Man, it's blocked off. One right there. I'll take care of him. Ah, I'm suppressed. All who oppose the born priest shall be destroyed. We'll just see about that. Let's do this. Strasburg was killed. Oh no, Kane, I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. I know it's gotta be hard, but you have to try not to let this cloud your judgment. I'm not a rookie, Frost, so don't treat me like one. I'm sorry, Kane. That's not what I meant. Don't worry about me. I know exactly what I have to do. Looks like this needs a new fuse. I wonder if this fuse would fit the broken lift outside. Well, there's only one way to find out. Uh-oh. Looks like this needs a new fuse. Not bad for a guy who got a D in electronics.
crush you just as we did the others. I'm gonna enjoy killing every last one of you. Man, what are you doing out here? Yeah, what are you doing here, man? I'm gonna take down the bone priest. Ha <laughs> ha! That's preposterous, man! Yeah, that's prepo- Yeah, that's pro- Yeah, that's messed up. You think so? Just try and stop me. Oh, we will! Let's kill him! Yeah, let's kill him. Hold it right there, Johnny. Who dares to call me by that name? It's me, Kane. Agent Kane? Surprised to see me again? I'm surprised you're not dead. Sorry to disappoint you, but it takes a little more than a city full of zombies to get rid of me. Now you either give me the boy, the brain circuit in the head, or I'll kill you. <laughs> Tell you what, how about I give you nothing and kill you instead? Destroy him! And this time, do it right. You! you. No. Gun! Now that's what I'm talking about. After witnessing the death of his best friend and hearing that the Bone Priest had stolen Dr. Eichen's brain circuit, Kane is now more ready than ever to face the Bone Priest and finally put an end to his reign of terror. A solar-powered barge, hmm. Hey, I'm back. Agent King, you're like a bone in my throat. I'm not going anywhere until you give me back the head and tell me what you've done with Bobby and the brain circuit. <laughs> you're too late. I already shipped them across the river to Golgotha. Why the hell would you do that? Do you know who Golgotha is? Yeah, a man who paid a whole lot of money for such an easy job. 
Well, it's too bad you're not gonna live long enough to spend it. Those are mighty strong words for a man in your position. I'm gonna take care of you myself. middle of the night. I bet I could use those solar panels to burn this fool. I think I have seen the last of it.
Kane here. It's Frost. Did you find the Bone Priest? Yeah. And? And he didn't cooperate, so I had to show him the light. Did you find out what he did with Bobby, the brain circuit, and the artifact? Yeah, he said that he shipped them across the river to Golgotha. Well, there's nothing on the other side of that river except a power station and a meat plant, so Golgotha must be hiding out in one of them. All right. I'll check out the power station. informed Cain that Bobby, the head, and the brain circuit were already sent to Golgotham. So Cain borrowed the Bone Priest's boat and headed across the river to investigate the power station, while Frost notified the chief and sent units to check out the meat plant. Now to find Golgotham. Well, well, well. I wonder why you're here. Am I getting too close? I'm here to tell you that you're too late. The wheels of destiny have already been set into motion. I now have the brain circuit, and once I have the boy and the artifact, there will be nothing you or anyone else can do to stop me. That's if you get the boy and the artifact, which won't happen as long as I'm around. You are such a bright boy, Kane. It's a pity you grew up to be so blind. What? Kane here. Hey, it's Frost. I take it that you found Golgotham? Kind of. He showed up in the parking lot, and this time he summoned everything but the kitchen sink. Well, that certainly explains the outrageous psionic readings I just got. Are you all right? Of course I am. Okay. I notified the chief, and we've got some units en route to the meat plant right now. Great. I'm going to go check out the power station and see if Golgotham is hiding out there. All right. Just be careful. I'm picking up some pretty high psionic readings in there. No problem. Hey, what happened here? We were attacked by a man with psionic powers. Can you describe this man? Oh, yeah. He was wearing black and white striped pants, he had numbers tattooed across his chest, and he shot electricity and lightning from his hands. Abel? Why did he attack you? Well, we were just working like we normally do, and this kid came running by, yelling for help. When we all stepped out into the hallway to see what the commotion was, the man I described walked in and started shooting everything up with lightning and electricity. Do you know where he went? 
He followed the boy down the hall, but you're crazy for going after that guy. I've never seen powers like that before. Thanks for the information. I'll make sure you get some help here soon. That guy pushed us against the wall without even touching us. I'd hate to be that boy he was after. That guy threw electricity around like he was channeling it from the station or something. It's no wonder that boy was running so fast. I'd be running too if that freak was after me. Sorry, I can't really talk right now. I've got readings to record. This is Kane. Hey Kane, did you find anything in the power station? Yeah, it looks like Abel is here and I think he's after Bobby. Bobby? How did he get there? I don't know. He must have escaped from the Bone Priest men. Never underestimate the power of a ten-year-old. I hear that. Now all I have to do is find him before Abel does. Alright, good luck. Abel, I knew I'd run into you sooner or later. Well, you know what they say, Kane. A family should always stick together. I don't care what Dr. Riken says. You and I are not family. You amuse me, Kane. You really do. But sadly, I'm going to have to cut our little reunion a bit short. You see, I came here to get the boy for Golgotham. And as soon as I find the little brat, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I hate to rain on your parade, Abel, but you'll never get your hands on Bobby as long as I'm around. It must be nice living in the fantasy world that you've created for yourself, Kane. One where good always triumphs over evil, where the hero always saves the world. I hate to disappoint you, but here in the real world, there are just some things that are far beyond your control. Like what? Take this, for example. Farewell, brother. So, do you think it's safe to come out? Yes, I believe it's probably safe to say that we've lost him by now. Are you sure? Am I sure? Am I sure? Well, not completely, I suppose. But we can't just stay here locked in this room all night now, can we? I guess not. I'm just a little scared. Oh, I see. Well, it's okay to be afraid, as long as you don't openly admit it to anyone. Got that? Great. Now let's get going. Right. That's the spirit. Ah, oh, my head. Oh. I gotta get out of here and stop Abel. It's locked. Oh boy, that did not sound good. Whew. 
coup. They stopped. Mm-hmm. This is definitely not good. Great. We'll never make it across there. Now, now, you can't just give up every time you're faced with a problem. But it's so far to the other side. Look, let me share with you a bit of the wisdom I've acquired over the course of the last few million years. There is a solution to every single problem you will ever be faced with. Really? Every problem? Well, okay, maybe not every problem, but there's certainly a solution to this one. There's no limit to what you can accomplish once you set your mind to it. No pun intended. Whoa! What is this place? Hmm, I don't know. But I'm beginning to wonder about the design of this power station. turned off that's it I'll bet if we can turn them all off we'll be able to get past this this whatever this room is supposed to be I beg your pardon, but don't you mean that we did it? Well, I was the one who ran around pushing all the walls and standing on all the pressure plates. That's true, but wasn't it me who helped you figure out what to do? Hmm? 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 Yeah, I guess so. That's what I thought. You know, we make a pretty good team together, don't we? Hmm, yes, now that you mention it, I suppose we do. Yeah, don't mess with Bobby and... Hey, wait a minute, you never told me your name. Well, that's because I was never given a name. Everyone here always refers to me as the artifact, the relic, the head, or some other demeaning term. Well, everybody has to have a name. Fine. If it's that important to you, then you may give me a name. But be sure and pick one that sounds dignified. You know, something that alludes to my infinite knowledge and superior wit. How about Ted? Ted? Yeah, it rhymes with head. It's perfect. 
Ted the head. Oh, no, absolutely not. I won't stand for it. You said I could give you a name, and I like Ted the head. It's funny. I can't believe out of all the names in the universe, you chose Ted. I mean, what about Supreme Being or the all-knowing Omnipotent One or John Lacasse? Mm, nah, I still like Ted the Head best. And that's what I'm going to call you from now on. Okay, that's it. Put me down this instant. Do you hear me? I want out! Come on, Ted, let's go. Well, I suppose that's what I get for allowing a child to give me a name. Now. I'm afraid of heights. Tell me, is there anything you're not afraid of? Of course. I'm not afraid of clowns, balloons, stuffed animals, toys. All right, I get the point. Now, could we please just find a way out of here? you think so, Ted? No, I most certainly do not. And need I remind you that I strongly disagree with the name you chose for me? I know, but it's your name now. Yes, but I... well, I... oh, never mind! walls in a hallway. I wonder if there exists a safety code that they haven't violated. Kid, you're not supposed to be in here. Oh, my 
my gosh! What? What are you talking about? Turn around so I can see! Do we have to go across those? But we're certainly not going to fly over them, are we? But what if I fall off? If you just move quickly and don't look down, you'll be fine. Now let's go! Chop chop! I don't know. I could get hurt really bad. You know what? Uh, you're right. Let's give up. Let's call it quits. Let's wave the white flag, throw in the towel, cash in our chips, pull the plug, call back the troops, abandon ship, turn out the lights, resign from office, surrender, and go home. Okay, okay, I'll try. Now that's more like it. Good job. I knew you could do it. Thanks, Ted. Hmm. Kane. Hey Kane, this is Frost. How are things going over there? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to go ahead and call you back, okay? You know something, Bobby? I must admit that I've grown rather fond of you humans. What do you mean? Well, when I first came in contact with your race, I thought you were nothing more than a group of arrogant, egocentric, destructive creatures with an insatiable hunger for power. But since then, I've come to realize that you humans can be imaginative, resourceful, compassionate, entertaining, and quite good conversationalists. And I just love those little soda cans they give you on overseas flights. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I believe I could probably spend a lot more time with you humans. Thanks. I think. You're very welcome. Now let's get out of here before I start crying. Hey, look! There's a lever on the other side of those fans. Uh, would you care to turn around? Oh, sorry about that. Ah, so there is. What do you think it's for? I don't know, but I suggest that we activate it and find out. So how are we supposed to get over there? It seems fairly obvious to me. Just run across like you did in the last room. I'm not so sure this time. They're turning differently. Are you questioning me? Have I not helped guide you through this miserable excuse for a power station? No, you've helped. I just think these are different. All right, fine. I mean, what do I know? I'm only the smartest being on this entire planet. to be so smart anyway. Oh, that's a very good question. Let's see. Where do I begin? Ah, yes. Similar to humans, I have an extremely high capacity for learning, and that capacity coupled with my Hello. Is anybody out there? Hey, did you hear something? No, I don't believe so. Anyway, where was I? Ah, yes. My extremely high capacity for learning coupled with my Hello. Somebody open this door. There it was again. There was what again? Can anybody hear me? That! Oh, you mean that? Yes, of course I heard that. I thought you were referring to something else. I think it's coming from that room over there. Yes, I do believe you're right. Let's go have a look, shall we? Hello? Is someone in there? Yeah, I'm Agent Kane with the DMPC. You gotta get me out of here. Oh, hi, Kane. It's me, Bobby. And Ted, the head. That's not my name! Hurry up and open the door. The walls are closing in on me. Well, didn't you hear the man? For God's sake, open the door! I 
I can't, it's locked! Hello, Bobby. Ah! Stay away from him, Abel. Yes, stay away, you cretin! What do you want? I just want you to meet a friend of mine, that's all. I don't wanna. Stay back! Look, just come with me and everything will be okay. No, I'm afraid! Oh, for God's sake, stop that incessant whining and fight him! But what if he kills me? What if he kills you? Do you honestly expect to become a hero with an attitude like that? Well, I... Now pull yourself together and dispatch this primate! Okay, I'll do it. Bring it on, Abel! Do you really want to be a hero, kid? Let's see how you handle this. Come here, kid. Not bad, kid. I may have underestimated you. Yes, you most certainly have. Come here, kid. Come here, kid. Find a way to destroy the control panel for this door. Thanks, kid. I'll take it from here. I don't think so, Kane. Off us, you barbarian! Hold it right there, Abel. Sorry, Kane, but I already have what I came for. See you around, brother.
Yeah? Hey, Kane, it's Frost. Can you talk now? Yeah, sorry about that. I was in a tight situation. That's okay. So what's going on over there? Well, Abel got a hold of Bobby and escaped. I think they're headed to the meat plant, so I'm going after them. Okay. Our squads are already set up over there. They should be able to assist you. Great. I'm on my way. After being rescued by Bobby and the Head, Kane is now in pursuit of Abel, who he believes is headed to the meat plant next door. I wonder if Abel came this way. Kane here. Hey Kane, it's Frost. Have you met up with our squads at the meat plant yet? Not yet. Where exactly are they stationed? They've set up a mobile command post in the parking lot near the front entrance of the meat plant. Once you arrive, they should be able to brief you on the situation there. Okay, I'm sure I'll be able to find them. Hold it! Only DNPC SWAT are allowed beyond this point. It's okay, it's okay. I'm Agent Kane. Sorry, sir, we don't care who you are. If you're not DNPC SWAT, you can't go in. Who's the officer in charge here? That would be Sergeant Blaine. You smell that? Yeah, takes me back to the good old days growing up on the farm. Look, I'm not one to brag, but I'm pretty sure I'm the best shot in this entire outfit. I know it's a clear night and all, but I could have sworn I saw lightning a few minutes ago. I was the one who escorted the last team to the front door. And let me tell you, I heard some pretty freaky noises in there. What are we doing at a stupid meat packing plant anyway? I mean, are they worried about a hostile cow uprising or something? What can I do for you? Are you Sergeant Blaine? Yes, I am. And you are? Agent Kane, DMPC. Ah, yes, Agent Kane. Your controller called me a little while ago and told me you'd be coming by. She also said you're the best psionic field agent the DMPC has got. Is that true? Damn straight. All right. Now that's the kind of confidence I like to hear. So what's the story here? Well, all we know is that the chief ordered us here because they detected some high psionic readings. So we set up a mobile command post and sent two recon teams inside to check it out. We haven't heard from either of them since. So what's the plan? Well, basically, we wait for reinforcements. And in the meantime, we try to formulate an effective assault plan. Unless you've got a better idea. I think I have a solution. I'm all ears. You're looking at it. No offense, Agent, but what makes you think you can do better than the last 12 men I sent in? You're gonna have to trust me, Sergeant. All I need you to do is have your men guard the exits and make sure nobody gets out. Huh. Well, I guess it's better than standing around here waiting for reinforcements. Walker! Sir! Please escort Agent Kane here to the entrance. Yes, sir! This way, Agent! This way, Agent! Hello, sir. Men, this is Agent Kane. 
Sergeant Blaine has given him authorization to enter the facility. So let's make sure he gets in there safely. Okay, sir. We'll keep him covered. What was that? I don't know. It sounds like it came from behind that door. Yeah, there's someone in there. Maybe it's one of our men. Should we check, sir? Negative. Just hold your position. Yes, sir. Hey, I think it stopped. What in the hell is that? Let's not wait to find out. Open fire! What was that thing? I think that's what happens to them when they get mad cow disease. Very funny, Agent. You saw that thing. Are you sure you still want to go in there? Look, it's going to take a little more than an angry side of beef to keep me out of there. Okay, but I hope you know what you're doing. Man, those were some big cows. Now would you look at that? Man, that's just not right. I mean, you think the guy could at least drop the key before he fell over the edge? It's locked. Mind if I borrow this? Well, it looks like the cows finally decided to come home.
I think I just killed the beef that was hanging in here. This is Kane. Hey Kane, it's Frost. Are you inside the meat plant yet? Yeah, and there's some weird stuff in here. What, like walking sides of beef? Actually, you're more accurate than you might think. I ran into some creatures that I can only describe as ghostly butcher bulls that had cross-totemic psionic powers. You're kidding, right? Wait, it gets better. I also think they came from the remains of slaughtered cows. What do you mean? I mean that Golgotha must have some way of creating these creatures from the beef here at the plant. Wow, that's creepy. And people wonder why I'm a vegetarian. Yeah, fighting reanimated cabbage would have probably been a lot easier. Very funny. So have you seen any signs of Golgotha, Bobby, or Abel? Not yet, but they gotta be around here somewhere. I keep looking. Okay, be careful in there. Alright, talk to you later. Let's see if this key works.
Kane here. Hello, Agent Kane. I hope that I'm not interrupting you. Would it matter if you were? Why, yes, of course. What do you want? I understand that you've undertaken an extremely important mission, and I'm simply inquiring as to how it's progressing. What mission are you talking about? Why, retrieving our super soldier and Dr. Eichen's brain circuit, of course. Super soldier? You mean Bobby? Yes. You must be aware by now that Bobby was the first successful recipient of the super serum. Yeah, but I didn't know that the serum was developed so that the government could create super soldiers. Don't be so narrow-minded, Agent Kane. The super soldier is merely one of many possible applications for the serum, and I'll be more than happy to go over each and every one of them with you once you successfully retrieve the boy and the brain circuit. That shouldn't be a problem. Then, I'm assuming you've already come to a conclusion regarding their whereabouts? As a matter of fact, I have. They're somewhere in this meat plant, and it's only a matter of time till I find them. Excellent. Well, I've imposed on you long enough, Agent Kane. I'll be in touch.
Kane. Hey Kane, how are things going in there? Well, I still haven't seen Gold Gotham, Bobby, or Abel yet, but they gotta be around here somewhere. Okay, well the reason I called is to let you know that Sergeant Blaine requested more support at the meat plant, so I'll be heading out there shortly. Sounds good, I'll talk to you later. Oh, wait a minute. What? I got another call from that government agent guy. Were you ever able to find out who he was? No, but I think he might be part of the Internal Defense Agency. Why is that? Because they're the only ones who have access to the DNPC phone records, and they're privy to almost all of our daily operations. Well, that would explain what he said about Bobby needing to be retrieved in the interest of national defense. Wait a minute. He said he wanted Bobby? Yeah? Why? Well, now I'm sure he's IDA. They were the ones who originally ordered Bobby's transfer from Icon Pharmaceuticals, and it must have been their military base that he was en route to when the armored vehicle got hit. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, I better get going, so I'll talk to you later. All right.
Having battled his way through the meat plant, Cain has finally reached the lair of Golgotham. Now he must fulfill his destiny and stop Golgotham from destroying the head and summoning the Sanity Devourer. Soon, I might add. Kane? Iken? What are you doing here? I'm here to stop Golgotham. What a coincidence. That's why I'm here. You're making a terrible mistake, Kane. You have to leave immediately. The only mistake I made was losing Bobby in the head. And I'm gonna correct that right now. Yes, that's a smashing idea. Now let's get out of here before it's too late. Please, Kane. Can't you see that you're playing right into Golgotham's hands? Look, I don't think you understand what's at stake here, Iken. This is much bigger than you think. Actually, I know exactly what's going on. I know about the Sanity Devourer, I know what Golgotham is doing, and I know he still needs you to do it. All this time I thought I was giving mankind its greatest gift, when in reality I was only bringing about its eventual demise. This is all my fault, Cain, and I need to be the one who makes it right. Well, I'm not going anywhere until I have what I came for. You see the brains in those containers? Those are animated replicas of the most powerful psionic minds in the world. So then what's with the empty ones? Those are reserved for the two most powerful psionic minds on the planet. Yours and Abel's. If Golgotha manages to obtain them, he'll become invincible, and no one will be able to stop him from using his power to destroy the artifact. Ah, oh, damn you, woman! I'm not an artifact! Yeah, his name is Ted! No, it isn't! So what makes Abel and I so special? Well, there's something I think I should tell you. Oh dear, here it comes. When we last spoke, I told you that you and Abel were my greatest scientific achievements. Oh, not that again. I'm sorry, Kane, but you need to know the whole truth. In order to facilitate your creation, we needed an adult male and female to serve as the genetic foundation. What are you getting at? I was one of those people, Kane. No way. It's true. I donated the egg that created both you and Abel. That's a lie. There's no way I came from you. You did, Cain. You both did. And not just from me. There was also a father. I don't want to hear this anymore. You have to, Cain. It's the only way you'll truly understand why you and Abel are so important. Oh, he's back! And you think he'd be able to muster up a more impressive entrance than simply rising up to the floor? Ah, uh, how touching. Mother, father, and son, together at last. If only your brother were here, the family reunion would be complete. What? I'm sorry, Kane. 
I tried to tell you. I'm actually surprised how easy it was to lure you here, Kay. And with the talent you acquired along the way, your mind will make me even more powerful. I really couldn't have asked for a more perfect outcome. Oh, this is far from over. Stop you first. <laughs> I believe this is yours. You weren't affected by the suppressant? How is that possible? Did you really think your weak mortal mind would have an effect on me? You're a fool, Joe. And since I already have a replica of your brain, no! Don't worry about her. Everything she had to offer is sitting in that container over there. You're gonna pay for everything you've done, Gold Gotham. And I'll never let you take my mind. If you won't give me your brain, then I'll just have to take it myself.
get when you mess with Kane. so kind as to indulge my curiosity for a moment? Sure, what's up? I was wondering why exactly you were congratulating yourself earlier. Oh, I don't know. Maybe because I just saved humanity? No, wait, you don't think that... You do, don't you? Oh, how terribly amusing. You think that you actually defeated Golgotham. I did. Didn't I? Well, of course not. Well, then who did I just kill? No one! You simply did battle with a mental projection of Golgotham in human form! You know, a hologram, an illusion, a fake, a... Alright, I get the point. It's just that he seemed pretty real to me. Oh, really? And when was the last time you saw something real rise up through the floor, hmm? I don't know. Precisely! Then how was he able to travel around and use psionic talents? Must I explain everything around here? You see, Gogotham was channeling the energy from the brains in order to project a human image of himself into our plane of existence. The energy from the brains also enabled him to use psionic talents. By destroying the brains, you not only took away his ability to use talents, but also his ability to sustain his projection, which is why he seemed to disappear. Alright, if that was only a mental projection, where's the real Gogotham? 
If I'm not mistaken, which incidentally I never am, I think you're about to find out. Please stop. 
see, that's what you get when you mess with Kane, and, and then come back again and try to mess with me some more. Hey, we're free! Yes, but we seem to be stranded here. Uh, Kane, do you suppose we could possibly trouble you for a little assistance? Uh, as soon as you're done patting yourself on the back, of course. <laughs> Alright, let's get out of here. Well, it's about time! Jeez, Ted, why are you so angry all the time? I'm not angry! I'm just a little impatient. And since when is that a crime? Alright, alright, let's just get out of here. With Golgotham destroyed, and the threat of the Sanity Devourer temporarily under control, Kane is now faced with the prospect of what the future will hold for himself, Bobby, and the head. Hold it right there! Whoa, hold on, I'm DMPC. It's all right, that's Agent Kane. Let's show him a little respect. Ted, you're gonna need to be quiet, okay? I most certainly will not! Shh! I don't know if these people know about you, so just keep quiet and let me handle it. Let him handle it. The man defeats Gorgotham and saves the world, and now he thinks he can handle everything. Fine. Hello again, Agent Kane. Hi. What's with all the soldiers? They're just a precaution. We weren't sure what was going to happen here, and we had to be prepared for the worst case. So, I see that you managed to recover the boy. Very nice work, Agent. And I trust that you were able to locate Dr. Eichen's brain circuit as well? Yeah, it's inside. Excellent. Is it still intact? Yeah, it's in one piece. But unfortunately, I can't say the same thing about Eichen. Well, that's a pity. I suppose now we'll have to find someone to continue her research. Kane! What's going on here? Who are you guys? I'm with the Internal Defense Agency. We came here to assist the DNPC, but thanks to the work of Agent Kane here, our assistance wasn't necessary. Well, he is the best field agent we've got. Well, I plan to speak with your chief personally regarding the superb job you and Agent Kane have done. In fact, I'll also let him know that every time we work with the DNPC, we see nothing but superior organization, flawless execution, and total professionalism. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Hey, Frost. I see you finally decided to show up. Yeah, sorry about that. Looks like I missed all the action again. You can say that. Hi there, Bobby. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Maybe just a little hungry, though. Bobby, you may have been exposed to a high amount of psionic activity in there. Why don't you come with me, and we'll get you checked out, and then we'll get you something to eat. Do you like hamburgers, Bobby? Yeah, hamburgers! Great. Then let's get going. Wait a minute. I'm not so sure about that. Kane, the kid's gotta eat. 
Don't worry, we'll take good care of him. After he's all checked out and he's had something to eat, we'll take him straight over to headquarters. All right. Okay. Well, everything seems to be in order here, so I'm going to get going. Let's meet with the chief as soon as you get back to headquarters. Your car is parked right behind mine. Sounds good. Take it easy, Frost. Bobby, why don't you run ahead to my car over there? I'm just going to say goodbye to Agent Kane, and then I'll be right there. Okay. Bye, Kane. Later, Bobby. I'll see you soon. Thanks again for your cooperation, Agent. I'll see you back at headquarters. All right. Kill him. Yes, sir. Huh? No! Damn. Well, Kane, it seems that we're all that's left of our beautiful family. Abel, what have you done? I couldn't let these weak humans destroy my own brother now, could I? You can't just kill innocent people. You should show a little more gratitude to someone who just saved your life. You just don't get it, do you, Kane? We're gods on this planet. Why do you still care about these simple humans? Because we are human, Abel. I suppose I'll have to rule this world all by myself. You want to be human? Fine. Then you'll die like a human. but I hope you know what you're doing. Would you mind telling me exactly why you find it necessary to draw so much attention to us? Are you trying to get us killed? No, I have to help Kane. By opening a gate? Oh, how very clever. Tell me, what will we be opening next? A window, perhaps? I don't know. I thought maybe Kane could... Oh my God, you don't even have a plan, do you? Unbelievable! I can just see the headlines now. Perfectly safe boy foolishly draws attention to himself with no apparent plan whatsoever and is savagely thrashed by villainous brute. Here goes! Whoa! You see what happens? Thanks to your ingenious plan, we were nearly struck by an out-of-control garbage receptacle. Hmm, I have an idea. Hey, Psycho, why don't you come over here and we'll make things a little more interesting. It's all the same to me, brother. You can die however you like. Consider yourself lucky, you little brat. I'll deal with you later. All right, now where were we? Oh, uh, yes. I was just about to kill you. Let's do this. No, that's gonna leave a mark. Way to go, Kane! That'll teach him! Are you alright, kid? Yeah, I'm fine. 
Oh, sure, don't ask about me. No one ever asks about me. I mean, it's not as if you both don't owe me your lives or anything. Hey, thanks a lot for the help, Bobby. Ah, oh, it was nothing. Nothing? Nothing? Look, perhaps you weren't paying attention when those few million volts of electricity whizzed by our ears. Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to forgive you for putting us in such peril. So do you think he's gone for good? Yeah, I think it's safe to say that he won't be coming back anytime soon. So now what do we do? Well, now that Gold Gotham and Abel are out of the picture, I guess we can get you and Ted back to headquarters where you'll be safe. Wait a minute. Need I remind you that the last time you attempted to transport me to safety, you were struck over the head by a group of common hooligans? That was different. I didn't see him coming. You didn't see them coming? Is that the best you can come up with? How do you expect Bobby and I to feel safe when you give us a pathetic excuse like, I didn't see them coming? Hmm? Hmm? Alright, I think you've made your point. Look, all I'm trying to say is that... Alright. Well, the point I'm trying to make is... Alright. Well, I never. Well, maybe you should have. Well, maybe I will. Will you two quit it? I'm hungry. Aw, oh, man, can't you wait until we get back to headquarters? I don't think so. I'm starving. And if I don't eat regularly, I start to get dizzy. Okay, I guess we can stop somewhere on the way back. Come on, let's get going. Aha! You see there? You're deviating from the plan already. I can see it now. First we'll stop off at some godforsaken middle-of-the-road run-down dining establishment. Then, while the two of you are busy gorging yourselves on what they're attempting to pass off as edible, Kane will be clubbed over the head yet again, after which Bobby and I will be whisked off to another supervillain's hideout, where once more the fate of your race will depend on you coming to retrieve us. You know what, Ted? I think I've had just about enough of you. Are you threatening me? Oh, now there's a laugh. Please tell me, just what are you going to do? Oh, oh no! Damn you! Straight up! I think my head's about to explode! Get down! Because the gap's about to unload! This ain't no game, baby! I'm stressed out, no doubt! One word out your mouth and get your damn life put out Take heed cause I'ma definitely bring the drama Next second step in my face is gonna Feel the pain from my brain exchange in the head Watch the stones scatter as I pour the gray matter I had enough of this bull It's time for me to bring it back to you Launch the seal through you My mind's overpowered by hate I can't understand the plan of the man so I break Look into my eyes like a bottomless pit Look into my face I'm looking psychopathic I'm trying to get a grip, it's useless Everybody better clear the roof I flip Every day I gotta try to keep hold of my mind Everybody in this world's trying to rob me blind Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity Insanity's real and I'm living proof I'm messed up, I feel like busting off the roof Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity I hate my girl, she left with my friend Ran through my bank account and cracked my bed Maintain my sanity Everybody always telling me what they want I'm gonna kill somebody for sure if I don't Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity I'm off the hook You're looking at me like you shook You scared of combat? Where are the guns and the bombs at? Maybe it's the love I missed all my life Maybe it's the stress I get from my wife The wickedness of the city got me ready to ride The city got me twisted and I'm ready to die I just lost my only job I can't even tell me that's fair I think I'm going crazy How do you expect me to care about you? You wanna play with me? Come on, what? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna play with me? Come on, what? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna play with me? Come on, what? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna feel me? Come on, what? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna feel me? Come on, what? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna feel me? Come on, what? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna feel me? Come on. What? You're playing with your life, baby. Every day I gotta try to keep hold of my mind. Everybody in this world's trying to rob me blind. Maintain my sanity. Maintain my sanity. Insanity's real and I'm living proof. I'm messed up. I feel like busting off the roof. Maintain my sanity. Maintain my sanity. I hate my girl, she 
she left with my friend Ran through my back, got cracked my bed Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity Everybody always telling me what they want I'm gonna kill somebody for sure if I don't Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity Brains banging, man Oh, oh, no, no, oh, oh, no, uh, oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh,
Look into my face, I'm looking psychopathic I'm trying to get a grip, it's useless Everybody better clear the roof, I flip Every day I gotta try to keep holding my mind Everybody in this world's trying to rob me blind Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity Insanity's real and I'm living proof I'm messed up, I feel like busting off the roof Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity I hate my girl, she left with my friends Ran through my bank account and cracked my bed Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity Everybody always telling me what they want I'm gonna kill somebody for sure if I don't Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity I'm off the hook, you're looking at me like you shook You scared of combat, where are the guns and the bombs at? Maybe it's the love I missed all my life Maybe it's the stress I get from my wife The wickets of the city got me ready to ride The city got me twisted and I'm ready to die I just lost my only job How can you tell me that's fair? I think I'm going crazy How do you expect me to care about you? You wanna play with me? Come on, what? You're playing with your life, baby You wanna play with me? Come on, what? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna play with me? Come on. What? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna feel me? Come on. What? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna feel me? Come on. What? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna feel me? Come on. What? You're playing with your life, baby. You wanna feel me? Come on. What? You're playing with your life, baby. Every day I gotta try to keep holding my mind Everybody in this world's trying to rob me blind Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity Insanity's real and I'm living proof I'm messed up, I feel like busting off the roof Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity I hate my girl, she left with my friend Ran through my back and cracked my bed Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity Everybody always telling me what they want I'm gonna kill somebody for sure if I don't Maintain my sanity Maintain my sanity Brains banging, man Oh, oh, no, no, oh